gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, Commissioner Bone is gonna lead us an invocation and pledge to this uh, flag. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this evening and the uh, chance we have to meet together this evening to discuss our city affairs. We're uh, grateful for all those that serve the city and that live here and uh, do their part to make Leesburg a good place to live. And we ask you to direct us this evening as we have our discussions and that we'll be able to discuss in a, a civil manner and make the decisions and move the city forward in a way that's, that's best for, uh, for all those that are here. And we say these things in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, we have one proclamation. I need to repeat this. Yes, okay. Uh, my authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Leesburg, Florida, I do hereby proclaim the municipal election of the city of Leesburg, Florida to be held Tuesday, November 6, 2018, for the purpose of electing three members of the city commission for terms of four years beginning January 7, 2019. I specify that the office of the member of the city commission now held by John Christian so shall appear on the ballot as seat two, district two. The office of the member of the city commission now held by Robert Bob Bone shall appear on the ballot as seat four at large. And the office of the member of the city commission now held by HD Dan Roebuck III shall appear on the ballot as seat five at large. Qualifying begins at noon, Monday, July 30th, 2018 and is at 4 p.m. Friday, August 3rd, 2018. All parties interested in qualifying for this election may do so at City Hall, City Clerk's Office, 501 West Meadow Street, Leesburg, Florida. The election will be held in conjunction with the county, state, and federal elections, and all precincts will be open. Witness my hand and seal of the City of Leesburg, Florida, this 25th day of June, 2018. So now we can move on to the consent agenda. Uh, routine items are placed on the consent agenda to expedite the meeting. If the commissioner staff wish to discuss any item, the procedure is as follows. One, pull the item from the consent agenda. Two, vote on remaining items with one roll call vote. Three, discuss each pulled item and vote by roll call. Uh, do we have any items that you'd like to pull? 4C1, please. Okay. 4B1. Can I get a uh, motion to approve the remaining items? Move to approve. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Discussion from the public. Roll call. Commissioner Bowen? Yes. Commissioner Christian? Yes. Commissioner Dennison? Yes. Mayor Robot? Yes. So on to 4B2. One. Oh, one. Four Sorry, 4B1. Four four yeah. uh, if someone could please introduce. I'll introduce and ask to be read by title only, please. Mm. Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Leesburg, Florida, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a construction services agreement with Utility Service Company, Inc for the College Street Water Tower Rehabilitation for an amount not to exceed $170,100 and providing an effective date. It just for the record, can everybody kind of speak up and into the microphones? We got a full house, so everybody wants to make sure they can hear. Is that better? It's still not? They're on. We'll address that. If I move to approve. Second. So I, I pulled this. Um, because the water tower um, design, and I already see that it's over over budget a little bit, um, but I pulled up the company website and and, uh, and and looked at this a little, and I know we're doing our logo on there. Um, I don't know how big or anything that is, but on their website, I saw these, you know, artsy or painted uh, water towers. So I just wanted to pull it and say, I know we're over budget already on this, but I wanted to pull it and say, we're well, we going to, you know, what are we looking at here logo wise? And just have, if there was any discussion at all of doing something that had some, that drew some more attention or anything like that. Well, at the commission. What we did uh, with the tower at Newell Hill was a solid kind of a shadowy black, uh, it's actually dark green. Uh, logo. We were concerned when we did that tower that we'd have difficulty matching the colors and that if we did match them at the beginning they would fade. So that's why we ended up with that relatively plain logo. And we Is planned that, on doing the same thing. And, and, that, and that's why I pulled it, just to, if there was any discussion at all wanted to be had, if we're just good with the plain one or wanted to do anything more, I don't know, cost difference or anything on that. So. Do you have a cost difference, Lisa? We didn't look into doing anything different than in the 
My joke concern was the fading of the paint. Well, initially matching colors, because it's, it's kind of died down now, but when we did the tower at Newell Hill, there was all kinds of discussion on the stick on logos that we've got and whether we were matching the colors that they were supposed to be right and everything. So we were a little bit concerned about that. So I did, I did notice in the bid that there was some large discrepancy between the, um, that part of the, of the bid of the breakdown of the logo painting versus some of the others. Like this one is, I think, is 5,000. There was one that was less than that even. But then the other ones were, I think, maybe 20, it was like 25,000 and so forth. So I don't know the, the difference in what we're getting, you know, what, what people were bidding on there um, for, for that part of it particularly. And then the other thing I saw in the in the bid was just that their containment part was a uh, their containment part of the bid was pretty low compared to some of the others too. So I don't is that any? Yeah, we we initially were concerned that that the whole tower would have to be tented and then sandblasted to get the old paint off. And uh, we found out that that's not the case. That uh, we can do it with a, a rel we can we can basically uh, encapsulate what's what's there now. And not have to worry about too much containment. So a smaller number on containment, I felt, was was not unrealistic. And then the logo itself. Um, so the, let's see. Well, actually, they weren't that big a difference. There were some that were like around twenty thousand, I think, and fifteen thousand. Um, but that's it, satisfactory. It, it's it, well, it's just hard to tell where the, those guys are trying to make their money and where they're trying to. Win the bid, I, but it's all the same logo design all the same. that they all yes, they were all bidding on. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. That's that's all I had on. Okay. Any uh, discussion from the public? Roll call. Commissioner Christian. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Dennison. Yes. Commissioner Brown. <clears throat> yes. Mayor Robot. Yes. Okay, so on to 4C1, if someone would like to introduce. I'll introduce and ask to be read by title only, please. Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Leesburg, Florida, authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to execute an agreement to donate property at 2319 West Side Drive <coughs> to the Leesburg Community Development Corporation of Leesburg Incorporated and providing an effective date. And I have to abstain, so I can't make a motion. I'll, I'll move for approval if we have to, so if that's so we can discuss. To have discussion yes. on Yes, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, we can't do anything. Then that needs a second. Okay. Second? Okay. Uh, the reason I asked this to be pulled months ago, I asked for the accounting from the uh, Leesburg Community Development Corporation and was given 2016. I have yet to see an updated version of where the money from the other homes that we have handed to the CDC. I would like to get the updated accounting. And for that reason, I am, and not having gotten it yet, I am not going along with this. Okay, just, so for the record, you did receive those records after your request. 2016. You, re, you received the records that you requested, and we had that discussion, and 2016 was not available yet because I think because you of the 506. You gave 2016. I did not receive 2017. 2017. That's correct. So 2017 was not yet available because I don't think, based on the 501c3 or nature or whatever, that reporting <laughs> is not due till later in the year. So I'll go back and follow up on that. That's fine. And but, in the meantime, I can't go along with this. And, ju and just for the, for the record, I'm just Chairman of the Board of CDC, um, David Logan has been our accountant f since 1997. Uh, being that we are a nonprofit, our 990s always push to the back for for-profit and businesses. Um, so we normally get our 990s probably July, October, however the, the season is. Uh, we'll be more than happy, as I told Al, um, if you want our monthly financials, we get them every month, certified public accountant. We never had a problem since 1997. The city gets our our financials every year for our CRA, um, and for us to get into the 50 percent of the CRA, they get a report every year from the CDC. Um, so whatever the CDC they provide us, that's no problem. Books are open to city council or anyone else who wants to see what we do. Was was this any other interest that was shown in this, or is this no? Just it was a, a request, request from CDC. CDC. Um, Yeah, I, I personally feel that if we're going to 
give or sell property, you know, real property particularly, that we should have some opportunity like we did with the other ones. And um, I do have some different feelings about giving the properties away. Mm -hmm. I think residential property should be leveled and set aside and have some design criteria for developers to give it to them or whatever down the road if they'll build a house that meets the standards that we that we set. Um, I mean, given the location and the disrepair of this house, I, you know. oh, it's it's in bad shape. So, mm -hmm. but we've seen some other bad ones that have been repaired, and yeah. and, um, and and it and it and it does get back to the property value thing. And and um, I know the one on uh, on Sixth Street there sold for like seventy five thousand, I think. And 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 I just I have a challenge with uh, you know creating um, low square footage comparables. For Leesburg, it's a real challenge we uh, that we face, and and I think I think we perpetuate that um, by um, by continuing to to do that. This one's a little di different neighborhood than on Sixth Street, but um, you know, where it's at there. But. Then. So it's not going to pass um, because it w all three of us would have to vote on it. Uh, so I, I don't. Are you just not in favor at all, or would you rather table it till you can get the financials and then reconsider it? That's fine, but right now I'm R not I understand. Favor. Understand. So, um. <clears throat> and, and, and I have to say, I mean, I, yeah, um, with respect to Commissioner Christian, I mean, it's it's something that I do get some feedback from in the in the community now and then is that you know how does how, we just give a piece of property. To the CDC without an opportunity for others to be in and, and be involved with it, and uh, with all the good that the CDC does and their purpose and everything, I mean, it's there's some community you know, questions about about that as well. So. And I think maybe the CDC should come and talk to the commission about the relationship the city has with CDC is different than other nonprofits because how the CDC was formed. Um, there's a federal consent decree that talks about the development of the CDC and the city and the relationship. And maybe this commission probably needs to have a, a formal um, conversation about the federal consent decree and that our nonprofit is much different than any other nonprofit in the city of Leesburg. So when the community comes, I think they need to be educated on, on the relationship the city and the CDC has, should have, and should continue to have. Um, I think I would say the CDC, every house we, 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 we've um, got from the city, we renovated and put a first time home buyer in, in this home, which was a, a Leesburg resident per se, uh, who were saying you have a place to live in Leesburg. Now beside this house, which is right behind my church's thrift store, on a dirt road, um, there's three vacant lots right beside that's for sale right now that no developers came in in the last three or four years to build a house. In fact, one was just torn down house right down the road is in very much disrepair. This house owned by the city of Lee's, but as you can see, needs to be cut. It's boarded up and one went on the side. Homeless people have been actually going to live in it. So I would suggest no matter what we do, the city immediately goes out and cuts the property and makes it look presentable. So we're not being a derelict property owner as well. And that was the whole interest of us coming to the city because this property looks bad, it has a red tag on it from the city of Leesburg. So we're well aware of the condition of the property, but as you can see, nothing's been done in the last four or five months. And as a property owner next door, uh, I would say this is bad management of the city of Leesburg. So if we're gonna take that approach, I think we need to first cut our grass, board it up and keep homeless people from coming and living. Um, I just had to call the city to uh, have one living under my truck my box truck right beside the thrift store, so we have a problem. So I think if we're going to sit here and just say, hey, um, let's do nothing, I think we should make sure that the property that we get through foreclosure, that we maintain them. I found out about this property because the last property, we didn't do our quick claim deed in time, so I had to find out when it actually got filed, which was 90 days after the CDC took ownership and saw this <coughs> property, which I called and tried to inquire about buying it about a year ago. So now here it is beside my property, which I maintain, but now this property owned by the city of Leesburg is not being tamed. So I think what we need to do is get a program that when we acquire properties, how do we release these property to get them off our books so we're not cutting and maintaining them, costing taxpayers money. And that would be all I would have to say on that. I, I agree with that. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't look like that if we own it. it shouldn't look like it does. Well, we got quite a few that I think we need to do yeah. more about. So could we get maybe get a motion to table this so we can have a presentation from the, the CDC and financials, and then uh, potentially, a, I think it sounds like we need to have a discussion about how we're handling our uh, foreclosed property in general. Motion to table. I'll, I'll, I'll second, but I, I, 
yeah, I think Commissioner Dennison is, you know, what she's getting at is just looking at some numbers, and it would, it would seem like it would be fairly simple that, you know, particularly on the properties that the city donates or that the CDC buys, um, you know, at, uh, at low, what, at, I think they paid for a couple of, of those properties, um, that there's some kind of a report back on those properties at least, <coughs> not that you have to, you know, see the whole, all the books of the, right. of the CDC, but to, but to know what's happening with those. With those particular properties, we'll get whatever you need. We have all the books, particular properties, CRA money that we get. And that's not a problem. We do it every year in a way. Finance has our CRA report every year. And I think you did give a general report on the one on Sixth Street. You said this is what it sold right. for. I don't know how much you put into it or anything. Yeah, but we, but we, we know what. We'll give a cost analysis of each property. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. In the meantime, can we get it? Can it get cleaned up or? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, any any discussion from the public? A roll call. Commissioner Dennison. On the proposition to table. Table. Table, table. table, yes. Commissioner Bone? Yes. Mayor Robeck. Yes. Okay. So moving on. Um moving on to the regular agenda. Um Public hearing and non-routine items of 5A, if I could ask someone to introduce. I'll introduce and ask to be read by title only, please. <clears throat> An ordinance of the City of Leesburg, Florida, creating section 15-18 of the City Code, defining disorderly conduct and prescribing penalties for engaging in disorderly conduct, repealing conflicting ordinances, providing a savings clause, and providing an effective date. Move for approval. Second. In discussion. There were some things that Commissioner Hurley had asked to be corrected in this. I was just wondering if it's been done. Is Chief in here? I don't see him. I'm going to say we did. Okay. Um, so I think we're ready to go. Okay, that's fine. Any uh, discussion from the public? Roll call. Commissioner Bone? Yeah. <clears throat> Commissioner Christian? Yes. Commissioner Dennison? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Robuck? Yes. <coughs> okay, on to 5B, if someone can introduce. I'll introduce and ask to be read by title only, please. <clears throat> An ordinance of the City of Leesburg, Florida, <clears throat> correcting a Scrivener's error in the legal description of Ordinance 15-50, which said ordinance did annex certain real property consisting of approximately 104 acres being generally located on the north side of Morningside Drive and east of Silver Lake Drive, lying in Section 1, Township 19 South, Range 25 East, Lake County, Florida, providing for a corrected legal description and providing an effective date. Move for approval. Okay. Yep, this is first reading. First reading. Any discussion? This property's, it's been this sold, is, right? Or is it it's under contract under right contract. now. Okay. So it's probably a good, one of the issues that needs to be straightened out. Yeah. And I'd like to, if we're going to, I, I know it's a, it's an error on our, our part, but we probably don't have to correct it. And uh, given that they haven't, the property owner hasn't uh, exactly done what they've said they were going to do, I'd at least like the developer or the representative to be here at the next one so we can discuss the future plans of the property and uh, make sure everything's still on track or back on track. Any discussion from the public? Okay, is that all over to our next reading? Uh, move on to 5C. I'll introduce and ask you read by title only, please. An ordinance of the City of Leesburg, Florida, rezoning approximately 18.74 acres from R3 PDO Plan Development Overlay to R3 PDO Plan Development Overlay to change the permitted use from townhouses to single family homes for a property located north of US Highway 441, west of North Lake Avenue and north of Fernery Lane, as legally described in Section 24, Township 19 South, Range 24 East, Lake County, Florida, and providing an effective date. Discussion. Um, if it's okay with yeah, I think I, what the, there was a, from what I saw in here, there's that vinyl fence issue. I was thinking we were going to bring up, up yeah. Up, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, but ju I, ju I know that that catches your attention, and so I uh, just brought that up. And, um, and, and so I think, you know, what's going on here is to convert this from reducing the number, the density there, and it looks like some nice um, shotgun-style 
houses are going to go in there possibly so yeah so I, I would just ask that we change the vinyl to require um, PVC or some sort of concrete they have PVC in their submitted documents um, so I, I think that looks nice but the actual PD itself allows for just plain vinyl fence PVC. PVC or I mean if they wanted to go further and do concrete and stucco or something they could yeah, certainly would be okay with that <laughs> and then the only other thing I have which I, I don't have anything concrete to say is that you know, is it, it's a landscaping um, tree shrubbery issue and and I don't have I'm not familiar enough with the codes to know but sometimes I I feel like when I um, when I see one of our new developments, whether it's a, a standalone commercial building or if it's a residential neighborhood, and then I see a, a commercial building somewhere else that's new or um, a residential neighborhood, I'm like, well, why do they have so many more trees, bigger trees, thicker bushes, more bushes than than what we have? And are, are we getting everything that we uh, that we can in, in these? Are we? Dan Miller, Planning and Zoning Manager. The uh, open space and buffer area requirements are taken straight out of the city's code. If you would like that to be beefed up some, uh, the applicant is here. We can work with him to do that. Yeah, and like I said, I don't, I don't have any, anything concrete to say. This is five trees short per whatever. Right. Or any, one of, one just, of the issues is when you take observation that it yes, seems sir. that we're we're pretty light usually in comparing to what I see in neighboring communities yes sir and, and sometimes in those neighboring communities years down the road what you'll have is two canopy trees that are planted too close together and they come in and interfere with each other so they don't grow to their full height and that's it does look a little less um, intense in terms of the planning at first it's really looking at it from a long-term standpoint if you want us to um, increase that then we can we can do work with the applicant and do that um, but that's that's the reason we have those spacings is based on uh, trying to do good management with the trees and the mature sizes versus what looks good, you know, as and soon as I, it's planted. That, but that, but that's obviously that. Yeah, I can that see the point. That when I see them, when I see our developments, you know, three years down the road, the stuff hasn't come in. You know, you're, okay. you know, some of it's died and never been replaced. It didn't get thick. It didn't grow tall. It, mm -hmm. And and so the things that you're concerned sure. about. It, it um, actually looks thinner than when it was even started. True, so. understood. But but I don't know. Like I said, I don't. You know, that's just a, you know, other for discussion again of the commission or if your thoughts or if the developer has some ideas of maybe extra they can do because I don't know. Say hey, throw one more tree per lot or anything. I okay. I don't. So damn. What would the entrance be? Would it be on Bentley Road or be on North Lake Avenue? The entrance would be on uh, Lake. Lake. Bentley. I believe we were just having an emergency access on Bentley. For a crash so or something similar. Commissioner Bone was talking about even if we work with the applicant um, on the entrance signs coming in because that's what people are going to actually see yes, coming, unless you live in that development. Because I think sometimes our entrance way are not really um, that appeasable to the eyes. So I think maybe we can work on that entrance way, the signage and maybe some of the, some of the trees. and Some additional lighting. landscaping, things like that. I, I think the uh, applicant would be, <coughs> uh, would welcome the opportunity to do that. And are, are there sidewalks that go through this too? Sidewalks are required okay. as a part of the code, yes, sir. And they got some of the trees broke some on, uh, on Lake. I think, uh, what, to Commissioner Bone's point, what would be helpful for me, because we had a big gap in communities coming up at all. Um, yes. If, if we have some examples of some that we are under the, the newer landscaping code, because I imagine this has changed over the years. Yes, sir that are, you know, three plus years out, and maybe you could, could send us one or two, so we could, so, because I don't know which ones were, were built when, under what codes, and, mm -hmm. and, and that would help me get an idea of um, how we I can, feel about it. We can put in a cross section of a typical planting in the PUD for the next reading, okay. if that would be helpful. And kind of, I guess what Commissioner Mayor's talking about is if you chose like something from 2015 as opposed to something that we're doing now, okay. and what the difference will kind of look like. Okay. No, you're talking about. If you could just show me an actual development, that, like point me in, in, in one that was was done, you know, somewhere between 2010 and 2015 under our codes, if there were any. Not much. <laughs> and that's the thing that's what I'm struggling with. You know, <laughs> yes. when I see one that looks bad, is it because it was built under different right, codes right. than we have now, yes. or is it because we need to change these? I don't know the answer. Somewhere. Um, I'll pick yourself. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wolfhart. Uh, 
who is the purchaser of the property, informed me that he has some examples on other developments that he has done that he's planning to do at okay. this one, and we'll great. we'll get those and then forward those to you. Okay. If that will work. And then that's more of a broad comment, I mean, just about our PUDs in general. For it, it, but it, it's true that 2010 to 2015 was pretty lean when it came to <laughs> <laughs> residential. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any comments from the public? Okay, that's first reading, so we'll lay over to our next meeting. Uh, on to 5D, if someone would like to introduce. Introduce and recommend, Reverend Tyler, only Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the city of Leesburg, Florida, vacating a 38 square foot section of easement consisting of an area approximately one foot wide by 38 feet long, said property generally located on lot 16, Live Oak Ridge, as recorded in Plat Book 13, page 24, of the public records of Lake County, Florida, and providing an effective date. Any uh, comments from the commission? <laughs> comments from so, the public? So this, this is a, a first. First reading. So, so I know it says that, that giving up this one foot by 38 foot strip is going to negatively affect, but we're sure about that. It won't. It won't have any mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. yeah. That's a nightmare when you build your swimming pool and it's like. Yeah. Um, Sorry if you have questions. <laughs> it's me. Yeah. That's a, just, yeah. That's a little bit of a nightmare when you realize that you crossed over somewhere you shouldn't have. I'm fine. That's it's it. not on top of the utilities or anything. If that's no, already been. Yeah. Yeah. It's just in the in that 10 foot area. Right. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right. So this will later to our next meeting. Okay. Uh, so on to 5E, if someone would like to introduce. Thank you. So, okay. Thanks. I'll Hello, introduce please. an SB read by title only, please. <coughs> Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Leesburg, Florida, authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to execute an interlocal agreement with Lake County Board of County Commissioners, Florida, for the purchase of new replacement radio equipment for the electric, fire, and police departments using a financing instrument with the Board of County Commission and authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to execute documents related to the financing and providing an effective date. Move for approval. Second. Discussion. Discussion from the public? Roll call. Commissioner Christian? Yes. Commissioner Dennison? Yes. Commissioner Bone? Yes. Mayor Robot? Yes. Okay, that's it, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just uh, on that last note, you'll see those numbers that have been added to the budget, and we funded those payments with the. Uh, we're proposing to fund that with DST revenue for next year. Okay. All you out. All me. Oh. Um, <laughs> we put together a, a quick presentation for you. Uh, for those of you in the audience, we're working on our audio difficulties. We'll, I'll, I'll speak up during the presentation here. Uh, but uh, essentially, the the budget, the budget, the the agenda has the uh, presentation for a visioning and strategic discussion. I don't think we really need any uh, response on that this evening. We, we've talked about this a little bit in the past. Wow. That's the other way now. We've talked about this a little bit in the past, and um, uh, as I'll, we'll be incorporating these type of things into the budget, the vision strategy branding RFP is out where we can come back and revisit these. But I also thought it was important to use that as a framework so that as we moved into the budget process, started putting plans together to spend the the, ca the capital reserves that we've built, that, that it does go back towards a vision, it does go back towards a greater master plan. So I thought it was important to revisit that before we get into the pool conversation this evening. So with that, I wanted to, I wanted to start out on the visioning portion and then move into the pool uh, portion. So the purpose of this portion of the program is to review, establish, discuss the vision statement. Um, again, always going back, review your financial position, our recommendations for what we think that you can spend safely and conservatively, um, identify goals, and in that, in so doing, discuss what we've kind of accomplished and what we can accomplish and how that fits into this vision, mission, strategy that we're trying to put together, and then finally answer the, the swimming pool question. So first is our vision statement. The vision statement I presented to you back uh, earlier this winter was basically to use history, to use our ambiance, to use our charm, to use our resources, and become a great community. So that's that's the, the, the out there, pie in the sky vision, a, a diverse community working energetically in 
and collaboration to ensure that the city of Leesburg utilizes its history, ambiance, and natural resources to become and stay a vibrant community. Uh, the mission then becomes, well, how do we achieve the vision? And the mission statement basically is more that governmental, we're going to use good resources, sound management, and we're going to promote things that help us accomplish our, our vision. So to provide effective, efficient municipal services that promote public safety, economic growth, and quality of life. I think those three things, public safety, economic growth, and quality of life are all the things that we constantly work and manage on in different ways or another. And, and if we manage those things right uh, and have a good mission there, then we'll achieve that vision. So we put together those, those five goals. Um, and I wanted to go over the five goals and then I'll provide examples of what we've done and hopefully where we're going. And I, I'm going to work it backwards and I'll get there in a second. So there's basically five goals. Four of them, I think, deal with big, broad topics. And then one of them is, is that governmental topic that helps accomplish the first four. So th those are, number one, to eliminate blight and stimulate growth by advancing neighborhood redevelopment, creating new economic opportunities, and investing in infrastructure. Goal two, promote Leesburg's natural resources and slogan as a lakefront city to enhance recreational and leisure opportunities. Goal three, lead the industry in providing high quality, low cost, publicly owned utility service. Goal four, deliver the highest level of professional public safety services that ensure security for Leesburg's residents and businesses. And then goal five, foster an environment where local governments promotes creativity, transparency, and wisely uses public resources. So before we get into accomplishments, let me step back and talk a little bit about money. Ooh, wrong way. Um, I'm going to say now about four years ago, the commission established, I think, a, a blueprint where we've, we've, we've almost accomplished those things, being with the Resource Center, the things at, at Venetian Gardens, the other reinvestment things came up, and the commission said you had certain goals, I think we achieved those, we needed to make certain improvements, and we want to do that fiscally conservative. And we, we basically came up with the pay-as-you-go plan for major CIPs, so that we could reinvest, and live within our means. Um, so when we move through the years, I think I've showed you this number over here, that somewhere along the way, we've, we've generated about $18.6 million. So let's revisit how we got there. Um, right now, your, your reserve cash balance for the general fund was 12 point, by the way, we, we reviewed these numbers about a month ago when we, we set up the community center construction reserve account right here. And so these numbers should look pretty familiar to you. For the public, it's, it's a lot fuller meeting, so I thought it'd be a good review. Um, so our general fund review cash is sitting around 3.4 million. Our staff recommendation to you has been to always keep that somewhere around seven and a half million. That's not quite double the GFO recommendation. The GFO is the Government Finance Office, Officers Association recommends that a general fund for a municipal government keep about 90 days of their operating cash in the bank for emergencies. For us, that's somewhere between four and a half to four point eight million dollars. Our recommendation is eh, keep a little more than that. Um, so if you subtract that number from that number, you end up with about $4.8 million of cash that you could spend on capital projects as a pay-as-you-go type plan. Recently then, we sold the fiber for a net of about $8.2 million, and right now from that sale in the bank, we're sitting on $4.5 million. So this number plus this number equals this number, which is about, it's $9.399 million, so let's call that $9.4 million. So that's what we have in the bank right now. Hold on, let's back up. We've done two major actions. We've won. Um, I think last month we pulled $3.5 million actually out of the fiber sale number to reserve. So we have a $7.8 million community center allocation, all cash. Um, 
and two, we also uh, put in the uh, FSL mall for the grant, and that was half a million, which we scheduled to take out of the general fund. So of this 9.3 million, we've actually spent this number and this number. So that's four million, so four less that. You're actually sitting not on 9.3 million right now, but on 5.3. So just a tick under $5.4 million cash. That's what you have to work with right now in your pocket. However, I think you do need to look a little bit into the future because we are scheduled to get the anticipated fiber cash, 1.875 million for payment two, and one point, the same thing again for payment three, which puts another 3.7 million. So you're really sitting on this number and this number in about, really in about a year. The, the next payment comes December 18, well let's call it 18 months. Um, the, next, the next payment comes December 18, the final payment December 19. So I think it's reasonable to plan for this, for future projects, um, but based on where you were going, um, you still wanna be maybe slightly conservative. Then there's the other potential cash things. This is still, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna call this pie in the sky because I think these things will happen, but they're not here as clear as this. Um, and that's the sale of the, the village's property. We'll net out 4.4 and the core slot property will plan out one. So I do think that this is money you can count on, but the reason I put it in yellow is I don't think it's money that you can even count on yet for the general fund because I think we need to make sure all our I's are dotted and our T's are crossed over and at the 470 property with infrastructure modifications and those type of things so that do, do, doesn't hurt that fund. Um, I think, I, I anticipate maybe you'll get a couple of bucks out of that, maybe to come back to the general fund, but I don't think you can count on that very soon. So where do we get the $18 million number, just so everybody sees it? It's this, plus it's actually this, plus it, that, plus that, plus that is 18.6. Also, keep in mind, we're also working on potential reoccurring revenues. So these are other opportunities that are out there for the city to collect enterprise monies and use it for capital improvements. Um, and that is the gas sale um, with uh, partnering with the villages. You know, that has the potential to net $2 million annually and then the bulk villages wastewater agreement, that has the process to uh, distribute about a million annually. And then also too, remember as, as we got into this pay as you go process, we always said that the, the DST revenues, the first thing that we needed to do for that was pay uh, the debt on uh, certain improvements that we did in the past. Um, and secondly, pay for public safety improvements, uh, equipment, the radios this evening, for example. But every year there's somewhere about $750,000 of free money to, I don't wanna say surplus, but that's kind of, we, we earmarked that as that's like our project money. We had these big giant projects, and we kind of had these maintenance capital improvement projects that were funded. So, so in addition to these things, you know, I think probably it's realistic that in the next three to five years that this pot of money, this additional $3.7 million will be there for the commission to go over and, and plan for capital improvements. Good time for Sorry to interrupt before before you move on from that slide. So it's not 18.6 billion. It's really more like 14.5 ish, right? Is it, am I am I missing something here? No, it's 18. It's but you're um, taking, you're, 20 more than available. I, you know, you're right. Yeah. So you're taking you're you're going it's, back taking that um, it's this. generated to date, cash generated to date. But but in the next column down, you have to you're subtracting out of that and getting to the 5.3. Right. right. So that's but really when you put it all together, because yeah. remember we're talking about cash that we've developed. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think you can underscore that. So if 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 I'm doing my math right, we we've got this 9.3 million, we've got this 3.75 million, and we've got this 5.4 million. So that number, that number, and that but number. You've got to subtract out what eight, you've already allocated. Which is which is what I did for you, Commissioner. So this number right here, and I was very clear about that. I said, right now, you are sitting on $5.4 million, which you can spend safely. Coming up, you've got this money, which I think you can count on 
and I think it's it, you can you can plan on projects out in year two and year three, and as we get into the other charts, I'll kind of show you those numbers. I think you can count on that number. This number is 5.4, and I unequivocally said we need to keep that over there in 470s, which is right now, and the sanitary fund, so that's sanitary fund money. We need to take care of 470 money, 470 issues first, then bring that money over. So the number you're sitting on today is 5.4. So that's what you've got in your pocket. Right. Okay. But I don't want I, I, I don't, I don't I, think, I, I, I feel like I was being misled a little bit to say that I, I we don't want to crash that, that we got 18 million of cash available we don't. Okay. What we I want I mean, what I wanted my purpose in giving you the 18 million dollar number was not to confuse the commission. That's why I put this in green. That's why I put that in yellow. That's supposed to be yellow. I don't know if it looks like yellow. Okay? But that's certainly yellow. So I wanted to, I did, the, the purpose of breaking this up is two things. Thing number one, and most importantly, that's why I hit it first and put it in green. That's what you got right now. That's what we're make, recommending you spend right now. But I also think it's important, this pay-as-you-go plan has been very successful. I think we've been very creative, very open, um, you know, and it's that oxymoron of, of, of creatively, what, what is it, creatively spending resources wisely and with transparency, if you can do that, right? But so th that, that's been, a, I think, a great hallmark of this commission is to put this together. So on one hand, I don't want to confuse you, but on the other hand, I want to kind of blow your horn too and say this is, you know, we have put together 18 million. But what, right now, it's 5.4. That's then, what we're dealing with. Is there there's some money that's got to come out of that uh, the village's money too though or is, or is that the net money after we that's take the care? net money after the sale after, and, and after the spray field and everything right, else too the EPA money and I went over that number with you in the other presentation that's why I kept this one shorter okay. rough house that number let's just talk rough house numbers the wholesale to the villages on now the 1115 acres is going to be about 7.8 million at 7,000 an acre and then you got to net out there's 636.6 acres that was EPA property, you got to net out 75% of the two appraisals, which was $7,008.50 an acre. They get 75% of that back. So I think the the, the the EPA is looking at about a $3.4 million check, and so you're netting out $4.4 million from the $7.8 million. So that number was in there. So moving on, um, let's go by goals. I think for, for the purpose this evening, I, I want to go backwards now on the goals because most of the big things that we've discussed, in my opinion, are really goal one or goal two, which is reinvest in blight or provide a leisure, recreational kind of quality of life issues. Um, so I want to blow through kind of goals five through three and then really drum on goals one and two because those those are the things that I think that we've really been dealing with the most um, to date. Um, so five, foster environment where a local government promotes creativity, transparency. You know, these are the type of things that I think you direct us as staff. Uh, we we, we um, bring on new staff for Andy, the IT improvements that we do, keep taxes low, pay as you go, uh, community um, capital improvement plans. The communication utility sale is one of these things where we're trying to find money. Recreating the 470 base um, and reestablishing that, that. Organizational compensations where we've been going through and finding that stuff. And so our new task, it's, it's a, you know, a little bit blah, but you know, we're going to continue to do those things. Continue to seek improvements, be creative, be fiscally conservative, spend our resources widely. So that, that's that type of goal. Um, and I see that more as the, the employees, this is what you have us for to help implement your mission. Goal four of uh, the public safety goal. Public safety is uh, 65 to 70% of the general fund. It's a major thing we do. So I don't think you can have a goal statement without talking about public safety. Some of our accomplishments, the accreditation, the police officer increase, which was a, which was a big deal for us, the fire assessment fee, which we implemented to, to shift financial blocks, some new tasks and new fire equipment we got last year. We're gonna have to talk about those type of growths. And there's some other public safety things that I kind of go back with with goal number one as well. The additional officers was it was was an well we already said that was an accomplishment. Number three, 
is uh, lead the industry. I think uh, an important thing here with our utility system is really the way we leverage those utilities. I think the number one priority has to be we got to be competitive, we got to provide good service, we got to be customer responsive, and after that we can take surpluses and then use the publicly owned infrastructure and enterprise funds then to help us with our missions of, of, of capital improvements. So I think we've done a ton of, of stuff here. Um, we've mitigated the smart grid stuff, we've reduced electric rates, I think a hurricane response fits into that. We did the, the new wastewater treatment disposal systems, which was doing away with the application of sludge, which really opened up the 470 property for sale, the village's bulk treatment deal, the village's gas deal. I think those are all great accomplishments of how we're using our utilities wisely. Tasks that are ahead of us is the turnpike expansion. We're going to need to expand those type of things. The water service um, look that we're doing in South Leesburg to figure out how we do tackle all the growth things that even tonight you dealt with a little bit. The 441 widening, which the commission wanted to bring back up, which is now back on the table at FODT, FDOT. And then every, every budget we've done since we made that first initial electric rate reduction, we've really tried to offset any type of millage increase with a corresponding electric rate reduction to keep our funds interdependent and, and be wise on the government side as well as, as, as being wise on the utility side. So I think that's an important goal that we always need to have. I don't think we discuss these things a lot because I think these issues seem to be no-brainers and I think our utilities have been, have been run and managed very well by the Commission which has allowed um, like hopefully like the wastewater treatment plant turnpike. I mean that's that's a big deal but with the deal that we we managed with the villages, you're, you're getting $9 million of reserve money to help offset that cost so we don't have to, we'll, we'll publicly discuss it, but it's not a huge issue because it, 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 w it was seamless. Um, and, and that's where some of that also, some of that 470 money needs to go. Okay, so now into kind of the bigger task that will lead us into the pool discussion. Goal number two is to promote Leesburg's natural resource and slogan as the lakefront city to enhance our recreation and leisure opportunities. So I, I think that's obviously saying we want to make Leesburg a great quality of life place. So one of our accomplishments in that regard, I think, is Venetian Gardens, and that's the, the easiest one to point out. Phase one, phase two, and phase three. Those things said we want to bring back the gardens, make it a location point, and so we've moved ahead in that. The things I think to to uh, uh, flourish in goal number two um, and tasks that you may want to consider are obviously tonight the swimming pool facility, which I think fits into that lakefront ambiance and recreational leisure service type of city. The marina expansion, we, we in and, we've been in and out with whether we sell the marina, lease the marina, and I think as we get into the budget process, I think you really need to talk about an option here where we expand the marina. The marina, since we've increased rates, now you have a competitive rate that's now market that's really returning nicely for the general fund. It's not a huge number, but we look at the budget numbers in the last couple years, the marina's been turning 175000 back into the general fund. Um, it's not a big number in some of the other transfers we talk about, but for the general fund, that is a big number. And in some of the proposals we've seen, we lose that completely. Um, so I think that that's a service that maybe we want to expand. Um, the Venetian Gardens downtown link it has, has been on the books in Leesburg uh, since the early 90s into the 80s where there was the concept of building um, pedestrian walkways that link um, Venetian Gardens back to downtown. Now that we've invested heavily in Venetian Gardens, I think that personally this is probably your number one goal that you need to do. Um, to, to, to capitalize on making sure that Main Street flourishes as much as Venetian Gardens. On that note, there was the, this tunnel bridge concept over Dixie, which, which probably needs to be talked at. I'll get into that in a financing way in a little bit. Cultural Arts Center has been something that's been talked about. And then um, let, me, let me jump to the bottom two and then come back to that Pat Thomas Field one. Um, in discussing around the community, a couple of other things that have popped up that I wanted to bring to your attention is the Historical Museum renovation. Um, the Historical Museum up here on 5th, it is in bad shape, so we, we probably do need to take a look at that. 
The trail system has been on the books now. I think we did the master plan in 2005. Commissioner Bone, you brought that up a number of times. We always throw some money at it, uh, but we really haven't been aggressive with it. So with some of these funds and with this slogan, maybe the trail system is something that you want to perpetually put a little more effort into and place it as a higher priority. And then just out there, pie in the sky is maybe we need to do a total remake over at Pat Thomas Field and, and get into the minor league league expansion type of thing. I think that's pie in the sky. I think that's a huge number. When we get to the budget charts, y you'll see. I think it's fun to talk about, but I really don't think it's realistic. Um, goal number one, now switching over to eliminate blight and stimulate growth by advancing neighborhood redevelopment, creating new economic opportunities, and, and investing in infrastructure. Uh, some of the accomplishments, the resource center, the corridor improvements, the seaplane ramp, the village's sale, the demolition program. We've increased code enforcement, the facade sign landscape program, which we've put together. So I think all those things go towards increasing tax base, um, tackling blight, and, and making Leesburg economically better. Um, new tasks on your horizon, the teen center, uh, continued thoroughfare corridor improvements. So even though we've done a bunch of them, there's still some that are still out there. West Main Street, East Main Street. Uh, Dixie Main entryway, by the way, you've already have that scheduled. Um, so that's ready to go. 441 widening, that's already been programmed as far as an engineering standpoint at water or sewer um, and, and electric is doing some work as well. The airport entry, I, that's not a big one. You guys talked about that a little bit to scale that back from the plan. Um, South 27 entryway and 27 corridor continues to be another topic of a corridor that we continue <coughs> need to focus on. I think you need to continue the, the FSL program um, and also kind of new, which we'll be proposing to you hopefully in a couple more weeks, is maybe the consideration of a residential housing rehab program where we help folks um, assist with improving the facades and housing in, in certain corridors um, within the community. Um, another concept you may want to look at is with the sale of the 470 property, maybe we need to look back at buying more acreage for developing another industrial park and getting back into the industrial development game. I think that will take an investment of buying some more property somewhere. Um, and then also, you know, I don't think we can ignore the homelessness issue or at least not continue not to talk about it. Um, so uh, those are from a staff level and from a community level that how we've kind of pieced together things that I think that the commission should consider. How do we do it financially? Um, I broke them down basically into projects that um, I think you need to make priorities and then I broke them down into projects of uh, I think this is things that maybe you want to consider in out years and then broke it down into projects that kind of fun to talk about but I don't think it's realistic but those things just fit with the vision so if it ever pops up it's kind of on the table so the immediate capital improvement priorities that that I brought before uh, the Commission the first one I th I'm sure this is hard for everybody to see the, this first one is the Venetian Gardens downtown link I brought you a budget estimate as of last week of about 1.5 million actually I think that number is probably going to I think that number is a little bit high um, we, we, we did finally get a, a little bit of an estimate from our architect. He thinks some corridor numbers, and depending on how big we go with that, is in the neighborhood of 750,000. That's actually a really good number for us because if it's in that 750,000 ball range, it's really going to fit nicely in the downtown CRA. Right now you've got about $600,000 cash there. So if you do this project, what I tried to do over here um, is, is show you um, how we're impacting that $5.4 million that you're sitting on right now. So that's really, I would, I would recommend that if we do this project or you give the go ahead to start planning for that project, I think that really can stay in the CRA fund so you don't have an impact. Uh, let me bring up the thing too, I know it's been in the paper, I think Tom Frost has talked to maybe some of you individually or all of you individually. The only thing that I th um, would bring up there is that concept that's been floated about closing Market Street. I will say on a staff level, we haven't really talked about that. I think that may be a concept you want to consider. I don't have a lot of information to bring to you on that. I know Mr. Frost has thought about it a lot. Um, I, I don't want to say that that's going to compete with Venetian Gardens, 
but I think it will a little bit, so we may have to prioritize that. I do have a meeting set up with Mr. Frost on Thursday to flush that concept a little bit more out. Um, the next concept there is the swimming pool. Uh, we are next going to show you a bunch of slides of, of different levels of swimming pool. I think a good budget number for a swimming pool for the commission, if you consider that, is going to be around $3 million. That is a cash hit on your, on your, on your fund. Um, the marina expansion, let me jump up. Teen Center is another concept that's been talked about a lot. $2 million impact that um, I put that that will have about a half a million dollar impact because I think you fund it with cash and you fund it with grant opportunities that are out there. So I don't think that full two million hits your cash position. The marina expansion, I think if you do that, I would take uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a million dollars. The numbers that I would put is a renovation of the facilities out there as well as additional slips. I would recommend that if you do that, you do a short-term note and use the new revenues that you generate from slips to pay for that note. Um, finally, uh, we've got the um, continued corridor improvements. I think to finish all the corridors easily, you, you're looking around two and a half million. That doesn't include, well, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, and I, and I, I think you use special revenues kind of incrementally and just kind of tink those projects away so you don't hurt your cash position. At the end of the day, with these numbers, I projected about a $4.7 million hit to your reserve. Uh, fr so from the 5.4, that leaves you with about six. 650,000, um, so that's what you would be left with. So if you said, yeah, let's do all these projects tonight, I'm gonna say you pretty much spent almost, uh, you know, just a tick under five million. Less, I would throw back a little bit in there. So I, instead of sitting on 650, 100,000, by the way, you'd maybe be sitting around a million. So you went, if, if you say tonight, build a pool for three million, build a teen center and pay for half of it with grant money, you're looking at spending four of the 5.3 that you have right now. That's pretty much what that shows. Um, Second tier projects, homelessness, depending on how, you know, that's just, I, that, that's been a really tough nut to crack. Um, obviously tonight was one of the ordinances you put in place to help do that. I do recommend that the commission does try to build coalition with the county and other cities. If we go it alone, we got the Dr. Marbutt report, so basically we know if we go it alone, we're looking at you know, somewhere around a million dollars to build a facility, and then operations costs are probably somewhere around half a million. I think those numbers can get tweaked down, but if we get serious about homelessness and we feel like we have to go it alone, those are the out, outstretches of those numbers. Trails, um, my recommendation on trails is if you go that route, um, we do have, I think it's the 2004 master plan. Uh, what I would suggest is we bring it back to the commission, we go through, make sure we like the old plan. Um, so we probably need to spend a couple of dollars on maybe some fees to help us go through that and weed out what we do and what we don't like. Um, not a lot, and then just incrementally fund that. The tunnel issue, uh, that's, that's uh, $3 million if we really want to build that link. Um, West Main Street is um, improvements from, say, Main out towards um, 44. I think that's a $10 million project to put um, curb and gutter and fill in those ditches. Um, the East Main Street project, I think that's two and a half. Main, Dixie Gateway, repeat what we've done on on 27 out on Dixie in Maine, um, about 1.8 million, and then your museum, I don't know what the cost on that. That's gonna be a few hundred thousand dollars. Long-term capital projects, you know, if you did something crazy with Pat Thomas, you're looking at 25 million. If you do a performing arts center, I think you're looking at somewhere around 15 million. So that's obviously why I put those as long, long terms, because I, I don't know if those numbers are realistic. Do you guys have any questions on that part of the presentation before we move into the poll? Okay. Al, real quick, um, when you talked about some of the long-term projects, East Main Street, um, Quarter Dixie, 
you didn't talk about how you were going to fund those. Are you looking at CRA funding or how are you looking at funding those? I think that, yeah, I didn't move into funding those because they were a little bit out. I would go back towards whatever cash position you have um, and, and DSTs and then hopefully new um, – New dollars from transfers from gas. So you're gonna come back and rank those. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, but that's why I put those. That's why I put those second tier because I think these are your first tier projects. And I think once you get these projects done, you'll know where you're at in terms of these um, outlying revenues that were that we're hoping for but aren't there yet. So this is what I know you can do. I think it's just important to remember that even if we don't have funding today. It, once the villages is built out, you're talking about three to five million dollars in recurring ad valorem that is not on this slide. You're correct. Anywhere. I kept. I kept, some of it has to be used there, but not most of it. Yes. I and I kept this capital monies. I didn't mix in ad valorem, and that's why I keep going back to the three and a half. Because on one hand, like Commissioner Brown, like you're saying, you know, hey, this is what we got, and let's make sure we spend it in the right spot because that's correct. But on the other hand, too, I think we still got to move forward, and we're still planning that there's going to be more capital monies. So the, the, those capital monies are what you don't spend, plus what hopefully by the end of this year we're going to see. You know, and we'll a we know we we're in the process. The, the gas is going to occur. The only thing out there that's holding up the gas deal is Tico. So hopefully that's settled in the next couple of years. Um, uh, the, and number number two is the the bulk water deal. That's that's pretty much done, but the water's not flowing yet. So these these are these are deals that I, I think you can count on, but not quite yet. So that's why that's why I come back to it. I want to mention it, but I also want to caution. It's not. It's still. You know, it's still a burden bush until it's done and the money's flowing. So, on to the, on to the pool conversation. Um, we came up um, with five concepts on, on the pool um, to show you from really six concepts. Do nothing, don't spend any money, continue to manage Dabney as is, so that's really option number one. Um, but if we go build a pool, the, the options become, which we tried to throw six concepts to give you levels of cost and what you can get for your, for your money. So cost number one is, is, again, we go from least expensive to most expensive. I want to also caution, too, that in this program, these are just build a pool costs. Then when we get into pick a location, we're also, we have potentially more costs to run into based on where we may put the pool, based on soil conditions and these types of things. So number one is, let's just refurbish Dabney, for example. Um, what we're trying to do with refurbish is um, it, uh, get it from, it's a 32 meter pool, you know, would be removable wall, new bathhouse, additional parking, shade structures, general rehab, um, night lighting and area lighting. Uh, we put all those things in the hopper. We, we think to get Dabney really functional for the next few years, you're looking at 875,000. On a side note, this bathhouse number, um, on all the facilities, we, 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 we repeat this number. Uh, because if you, if you build a, any type of aquatic facility, you're going to need the bathhouse, entry, office space. That number we estimated at 550000 So that number kind of recurs because it's a, it's a rehab dabney and a bathhouse or it's a new, some type of new pool and a bathhouse. So concept number one, let's just go with Dabney, let's put a little money into it, 875,000 is what we think that that would cost. Number two is stay at Dabney or take this pool concept, which is a basic competition pool that will provide the commission the ability to uh, have swimming lessons and uh, swim team access, um, and that's it. So it's a 25-yard pool by a 25-yard pool, which is eight lanes, new bathhouse shade structures, and lighting the pool up. That number, 1.7 million. Concept number three is a 50-meter pool uh, with a 25-yard pool. 
the 50 meter pool to make it more of a regional attraction. Um, so it's, you're talking about two types of pools, kind of diving boards, new bathhouse, shade structure, night lighting, and cost 2.265. Concept number four now gets back to more of a, a, a lap swim pool and a recreational pool um, where we have your 25 by 25 yard pool. We throw in some diving boards. Um, we put in a slide. We do a, a beach entry so you have more recreation and then shade structures, lighting, bathhouse. Cost on that, 2.6. Concept number five is, is the Cadillac, where you have uh, the, your, your big pool, you have even more fun recreational areas, teaching pool, diving boards, multiple slides, beach entry, floating play area, bathhouse shade structures, lighting, and our number on that is about 3.4. I, I, I feel like that number's just a little light, so that worries me a little bit. Um, so all in all, I think those are your concepts. My suggestion would be that probably concept number four is about where we would need to run up. So I'm, I'm thinking that, as you saw in my presentations, that $3 million planning number is a good one. So if you build a pool, where would you put it? Um, I, I, my recommendation to the commission is that if you do build a new pool, the best place to put it is the Leesburg Recreation Complex at the gym. I think that makes the most sense. We own the property. We know some of the soil conditions. It, it, it keeps all of our recreational leisure things together, and it allows us really to remove the two older pools that we have, Venetian Gardens and Dabney. I think Dabney's good for a little while, but eventually Dabney is going to need to be closed down. Um, I also think that investing in Dabney heavily is not the greatest in concepts because you're going to throw, you're going to end up, if you put a million dollars into that pool in three to five years, you're going to be back putting money into that pool again. So I, Dabney is not quite as, as bad as Venetian Gardens pool, but it, it is on its way. So uh, I think the best way to wrap this up is have one pool, put it at the gym. Some other considerations are Rogers Park. Um, Rogers Park, uh, down by the splash pad, I think has some nice options to it, um, but it also has some drawbacks to it. And the other issue, which we haven't talked a whole lot about, is Susan Street. I think if you go to the Susan Street Park, that's a good concept for that as well, because it links in the parks, we have space for it. Um, Four, I didn't have this. I, I added this actually today at 5 o'clock. Um, com uh, commissioner, school board member Bill Mathias contacted me, I think on Friday evening, and um, when he heard about our discussion, said, hey, he would advocate that the, the school board provide us the old Dabney School property, four acres, if we build it there, that the partnership that he would add, now this isn't a done deal, this is what he would advocate. And if you say, hey, we love that concept the best, then that would have to be tagged with, go make that happen. But the, his, what he advocated was a, um, if the city build a pool at Dabney, the school board provide us, grant us the four acres in exchange for opening up, this is, it wasn't a bad deal, uh, in exchange for opening up to hosting the swim teams without cost for Leesburg, Eustis, and Tavares, which I think we can accommodate if, if that's the location. Having said all those things, I, th I think the gym is the best spot for us. We own it. It brings our recreational things together. And, and I think it really accomplishes what we're doing. So questions? I tried to keep that as brief as possible. Yeah, I, I would have some questions on the um, location cost. You know, obviously, like you said, there's going to be, you know, depending on where you put it, different costs that would be involved. And you know, one of those is the Rogers Park. I think that's a tight fit, and I know you were working on looking at some numbers there, but basically I think the concept there would be to take out the Boys and Girls Club building and somehow reconfigure and throw it in right there. Yeah, that, would, that, that concept would be take out the Boys and Girls Club building, take out a couple trees, and move the lift station. And that would, that would close, um, what's that street called, Cove? What's the? Oh, uh, yeah, no, we can get it in there without in closing there without that closing down. That. Okay. Yeah, but I, okay. think, I think ultimately what, where the, the, the downside to that one is, is I think we're going to run into some soil issues. I think we're going to run into some parking issues. I think we're going to run into some operational issues, too. It, I mean, I think if we put it 
there in Palmer Park or the edge of Palmer Park, you're not going to get night use out of it. I think we put big lights there, and I think we're going to get complaints. That's another reason why, and I think that you fall back to that gym position. But then again, you put it over there, I think what you do is you link back that goal number one, you, your goal number two, the, the lakefront city concept. Do things that drum up and beat people up with, hey, we're the lakefront city. You put your swimming pool on the lake with all these improvements you made. I think that has some scenarios, too. I think operationally, though, you got to fall back and go to the recreational one. Which which one of these pools, um, or would all of them work for the school board? Um, all of them would work for the school board. Okay. And, and let me and let me put a caveat on that. Um, what I understand through um, Mr. Matthias is they just need an operational regulation swim pool. Which so they need eight lanes, 25 yards. And as long as that's what he meant when he told me Olympic-sized pool then all of these would work. So how does the, we all, the teen center, because we talked about the location of the teen center being by the gym, what, yeah, what, what are we talking about I mean, options for All that? those things, if, do we have a picture of that? I think we do. And, and try, if you, this is where I need to try out this. There's, there's some concepts that we did want to flush out for you. We didn't put it in the, presentation for the purpose of brevity. But the, the, the gym actually has the size to, to host the teen center. If you can blow that up, um, and I'll just let me use this. The, the gym has the potential. This is, I hope I, so here, this is Griffin Road. There's Carver Middle. This is, oh, where'd, where'd you go? Oh, yeah. You want to go back to that? You can go to ask. Okay, so Griffin, here's the gym. Obviously, this way is, is normal. Here's the gym. Teen Center would fit right here. So what do you put? Your Teen Center would like 8,000 8, 8, 8, square, square feet. feet. So that would actually be right here and attached to the gym. The pool is actually scheduled to go down in here. And so I think we put a little more parking in here. We shifted. We made. We, we got to make our retention a little bigger. But a swimming pool can fit right in here. How much is a little more parking? Because there's already insufficient parking there yeah, for even I, what we have. So our plan repeats this. So we build that again. Yeah, because so I mean, it, uh, yeah, with, even control. even with the use of the gym right now, people are. I mean, it's really probably pretty dangerous because the way people have to park, including myself, <laughs> when you uh, go to. Uh, games there and you're parking up in the grass and the trees and the circular motion that goes through there and kids running across the parking lot that's uh, um, not the not already not the best setup so I would question you you know you probably need three times that amount of parking for a teen center and a swimming pool to go in there not just double you know, maybe even four times the amount of parking yeah I don't see both there I don't have a problem with the location I have a problem with too much there because if you have a basketball game and a swim meet at the same time, how's that gonna how's that gonna work? I don't. What one of the things happened, that, what I'm, happened to the, the, the there was some because there was some discussion about some county property up on the other side of Griffin there. That's that, is that off the table? No, okay. we we tried to keep your options a little bit limited. I mean, we can give you a list of ten sites if you like, and and they can get totally expanded. That site that you mentioned, it's actually right here. The, the, these this cluster of trees right there. That's county property up in here. We could, you know, potentially use some of this and, partner and with the county. Now, was there some indication from the county that they would be willing to? Uh, there was indication from David Heath, the former county manager, four years ago that the county would consider that. I would still, I, I, I would think that the county would still be open to that type of partnership. So let me, let me ask you a question. So, because and I know Commissioner or Mayor Roebuck probably tried, and probably all the commissioners have tried. I've, I've had several discussions with whether it's Beacon College, Lake Sumter College, um, the, the, uh, the school board, the county commissioners, and just various people. Let, let's all partner together and contribute some money to, to take care of the swimming pool issue. Nobody wants to put up any money, but I hear counties willing to maybe give a piece of property here. School boards may be willing to give a piece of property. And, but that then forces us to select one of those locations to do it. If they're willing to participate in donating property, 
can we approach them and say, would you donate this property to the city, donate this piece of property to the city, allow us to develop it, market it, so that we can take the money then and put the swimming pool where we want to put it, um, which may be a different location. It may be at Venetian Gardens to be able to you know, justify the cost to put it there, which I think if we're going to do a pool, that's where you put it because it goes with everything else that we're doing it at, at um, you know, for that lakefront, the recreation, and everything else. And but that's going to be the one that's going to cost more money, probably with the uh, the soil conditions and lift pumps and that. Yeah, kind let of me thing. let me address that. In in my opinion, the partnerships are all over the place, and it depends who we're partnering with. Generally, it's not as advantageous for the city. And so when, when I see let's partner, I think, okay, they're going to they're gonna cough up some cash. Nobody except us is coughing up cash. Exactly. So if we're going to partner with the county or the school board, I think what, you, what that partnership will look like is we build a pool, we operate the pool, they give us some property, and in exchange, they may dictate the type of pool that you put in. That's why I go back to that recre that that option of the recreational pool, that three million dollars. I think if you put three million dollars to a pool and you partner and use, and the county gives us this or the school board gives us Dabney, then I think you're still around that three point million dollar number, and and I think you have a reasonable partnership. Alone, I don't have a problem with the pool there. I don't have a problem with it, particularly at the at the recreation center, um, or at the. <coughs> Dabney property or across the street from Venetian Gardens on the where the shuffleboard courts are um, with any of those but if I look at what we're doing at Venetian Gardens and the amount that we're, we're investing there and the the um, what we're creating at Venetian Gardens and you know I'm not supportive of how much money we're spending on the community center but with what we're doing and all the money we're spending that's where I say you put the you, you put the swim you find a place to put the swimming pool there at Venetian Gardens and somehow make that work because that's that's like the you know that dotting the eye of um, of what you're doing there at at, um, at Venetian Gardens. So. And you mentioned a couple of lo other locations. You know, Venetian Garden. You mentioned shuffleboard courts, tennis board courts over here across the street. Um, so there's if if, if, if the question is, build a pool, yay, we can, we can talk another six well, months. Well, well, for me, when you talk about location, I want to talk about the economics of it. Because you tell me if I can build a pool at this location and go into another location, it'll cost me a million dollars more. And I'm going to determine, okay, or try to decide why am I spending a million dollars more when we got other projects that we could be doing because of a location. And I, and I get it. If we go to, if we go to Venetian Gardens, I want us to have build a pool that's going to provide night swimming, going to be stay as they are, and I don't want to hear no one coming saying the lights got to go off at 6 o'clock. So I think that's very important to me. If we're going to spend this kind of money on a pool, recreation-wise, I don't think it should shut down at 5 o'clock. So when we pick location, I think that's what we also need to make sure that we're careful of, not because it's where we spend a $6 million or whatever community center. I want to put it where it's going to be actively in, in, involved with, with our entire community, not just because I got a swim meet, but if I want to have something at 8 o'clock at night, I want to be able to do that because I want a pool that I spent $3 million on, or 3.5, because I'm, I'm still lacking a Cadillac version myself, but I think uh, I think it should be for the, for the entire community. I don't think it should just be for a swim team, it shouldn't be just for a particular group. I think it should be for mom and dad who are gonna bring their kids and enjoy the, the activities of the pool. If I'm gonna go three million, let me get 3.5 million and build something that's gonna make Leesburg a shining star, not just because we want a pool. But, but, but I have to, Commissioner Chris, right. I have to disagree that's with spending fine. all that money for a swimming pool because I don't think you get, you know, to go for a Cadillac, I don't think you get the value out of it. Um, I know nobody likes to hear, well, you know, this is what happened in this place or that place or whatever, but I've seen it. You just don't, there's no way you're going to get the, not only you won't get the money out of it, you're not going to get the use out of it to, um, for, you know, for what you, you for, for just what you expect that the, um, there's, there won't be a tremendous flood of people to use a swimming pool like this. It becomes an amenity that I think does need to be, have multiple use. I like the idea that the, you know that if the school board's willing to say, okay, we will have your our Tavares, Eustis, Umatilla, and Leesburg's you know meets in in Leesburg, that's going to bring some bring some traffic in. So um, I think you do need to have that kind of that kind of a partnership to have um, to increase the use and the and the 
traffic of people coming into into town for these things. So think about the 2.6 million on option number four and the 3.4 million. Switching locations, you're gonna lose that 2.6 to 3.4 million because I, because because right here the, at the gym location you have a parking lot and we're and we're I guess we just admitted I guess we're having a parking so I don't know why. We have a direct staff go knock trees down and provide better parking. And we all just said it's dangerous, kids running now. So I don't think why that's not in the budget, go knock trees down, expand the parking lot. We got an existing facility that we're saying, just admit it on record, that it's dangerous. I think we should immediately, without doing anything, we should be knocking down trees. I think we got 10 acres, which goes all the way down um, that, that, that road. I mean, that's I basic. agree. I, I think there needs to be more parking out there. So, so, so well, and, that's, and we kind of didn't get there. So. There's, now, now, can I can I go a step farther when we talk about Susan Street? I mean, because there has been, I know, at least Al, you've had discussions with me, and I'm sure probably with others, of, um, about an expanded recreational facility at Susan Street. Right. Can, can, you, I, keep can, it, can I keep it? Uh, can I keep it? Can I show that to you? Um, you can open it up. Shrink that down. <laughs> um, because that then goes to address one of your other. Um, yeah, you know, and I think I'm going down the path that in some of the city, obviously Griffin Road, here's 27. Here's Susan Street Park. And, and so the city owns this block here. We own this block here. We own all this. This, this by the way, now is the gym. It does something like this all the way up. So actually, the gym all the way back around the Susan Street linked together. So the overall concept is, you know, if you do put rec center there, or teen center there, you stick pool in here, you open up all of this, and you start working yourself back around into Susan Street Park. Or you do it inverse, put the pool down here. We don't get a whole lot of use of the shuffleboard court, or the, the shuffleboard, I'm sorry. Uh, racquetball. Racquetball courts here. You can you can get pool in this area and, and, and work it backwards. What about and that little you area do, you're avoiding you can you're do going around there? Right yeah. Is this where you're talking about? No, and over I'll, here. I'll, I'll come back to that. Okay. I'll come back to that. And you can build gateway and make improvement out here in the 27 so you have entry into this whole recreational concept. Now in the middle of all of this, where I wasn't avoiding, but I was coming back to that, that was the punch, and so that's Beecher Street, you know? The, the concept on there ultimately long term would be maybe the city needs to look at capturing all of this and condemning this property and all of this become a giant park area for the city. About six months ago, I was gung ho on that internally. It popped up. That, that's a tougher deal to do after I talk with Fred. <laughs> been down that road before. We've been down that road before. But I mean, long term, I mean, if we really, really want to tackle blight, we want to make a big statement, we want to invest and fix community, I think we, we do take a long term approach um, at, at fixing this. The one, the one project that I would bring to your attention, and I don't remember the name of it, it was that one on up in Atlanta where they had the, the PGA tour. Does what? What's the name of that? Okay. Where they do the PGA the championship, oh, East Lake. Lake. In outside Atlanta. They went into a blighted area, they condemned it, they bought it all up, and now it's ritzy titsy huge property. The, so um, that, that's the kind of concept. I don't know if you ever get an East Lake, but but this this all of this can actually all work together. And in, in Fort Myers they built Red, the Red Sox Stadium right in the Yeah. So in the, oh, uh, oh, oh by the way, this is the trail. So it'll actually and, and then down over here, if we come back a little bit more, is yeah, can you scroll down? Plaza. You know, I, don't, I, I didn't include Palm. Yeah, and can I you keep going? Because this is the other thing, Al, that I that I brought up several times. Can you go yeah, down a little bit farther? Is, so yeah, this is Palm okay. Plaza right here. This was the property that Ben wanted to. Right. So, in. so Mr. Walling wants to. He's willing to donate that whole piece of property right there behind the that that whole area. He's willing to donate to the city of Leesburg if we will help him to facilitate, I don't even think he's made it a condition, uh, but to come in, to be able to come in off of, four, of 27 there to come back into that area. Now, and so. on that note, I would, I would just point, I think that's a, that's a, that's a good concept. We're, we're, we're actually, as we get down here, we're really only linked to the, uh, there's another parcel that's owned by somebody in here, not us. We've got like a little hook that comes down here. Um, and, but, that's a good concept. It can link us all together. The only problem with this concept is we really can't take this without everything else because that property is really not that usable. 
You know, if we're going to develop it into something, if it's wetlands, maybe maybe that becomes stormwater area for other development areas or those type of things. Well, the, the wooded area is like that. That's an old pond. Right, but that's yeah, up so, in here. That's right. not Bennett's property. This is Bennett's property, this gray, yeah. which is which is wetland kind of property. So I mean, but but anyway, the, but the big scale of that is there is there is and go back, Brent, if you can, shrink that down. There's I just I think there's opportunity in here for uh, in, to to make a major statement, a major recreational statement right in the center of town. I, I, so I think that that's whether you ever get there, but that's a big dream. But I think it's it, it's I think it's more realistic than putting twenty million dollars in Pat Thomas Field. I mean, all the business sessions that I've gone through, especially one in St. Petersburg, um, the city's talked about being intentional. You're removing blight, uh, improving your city is about being intentional. And I think the city commission, if we make these major improvements, we have to be intentional on our efforts on improving and removing, improving our city, removing blight. And I think this is an intentional move to not only accommodate a new swimming pool, I think that's accommodates the goals that, that we've had uh, for many people in our, in our city, but also it, it goes to the effort of, of putting things in a recreation complex. I was just in Sarasota. Uh, their sports complex, everything was in one location, baseball, um, gymnasium, swimming pool, all splash play, was all in one location. So I, I, for me, I think that's my desire to see that we have a sports complex where parents can go and they can have a family experience all at one, at one time. Yeah, and, and, and Commissioner Christian, I, I like the, the idea of expanding the, the recreation here because, you know, with the two anchors you have, you know, the, um, the gym and then all this over here, which is not going to be the one of them are going to go away. But this, this little neighborhood, I've mentioned it several times, is I, I think this neighborhood right here, to me, is, is um, an ideally suited neighborhood for, re, for um, redevelopment, for um, I don't know for, for um, fixing up the homes and um, going from a rental community to uh, and I know there's people that own in there, but going but going from a rental community to ownership, we've got you know right here. Where's the Dixie or the uh, where's the Mac? We're right here. We just we just spent did this nice improvement area here, and so if you take what we've done here and and you expand this over here, and you've you've got this. You, you, know, you put a swimming pool over here, you expand these facilities, maybe go work out something with, with uh, Mr. Walling to do this, and you've, you've just really created a pocket here between, you know, I think between 27 and 441 and the, and the recreation facility to create a, a, a pocket of redevelopment there. And then that helps increase property values and, and then that could spread over into all over to Beverly Shores and Carver Heights and in and, and and the, those neighborhoods. So. Can you work on a feasibility study and see how long and an estimate of how much you're talking about? Oh, for that whole, the whole thing? Yeah, I, we would need some outside consulting help on that. And I think putting together a big thing on that, that, I think that's a year in the making. I don't think we say we don't, we don't not do a swimming pool to the teen center in that area. Mm -hmm. I think we can do it hand in hand. Absolutely. But before the pie in the sky gets to be too much, let's see what it's going to take and let's see what we're talking about. I, I, I would like to see, based on some representation, that you've got a school board member who's willing to put up the Dabney, it gets, it advocate putting the Dabney property up for this, if, this, if, this, if we can use the pool for school purposes. You've got the county you know, that's willing to maybe allow us to have that piece of property up there to do it that there be some sort of common sense and meeting of the minds in, in both of those parties that hey maybe the better place to do it is to put the pool is over here and we want you know in you know in this area or maybe it's over in here or somewhere else but we do need their help we're not going to ask for money but those properties that they're willing to to give to us to do it will you just give them to us so then we can use them to help fund it somehow um, and, and whether that's that the pool ends up here or ends up at Venetian Gardens or wherever, but to, but to follow up on that, 
that partnership and they don't have to give us cash give us the land and we'll make cash out of it so just realize that you're going to lose control of the scheduling and everything else if you partner with the board of education but you're going to but you're going to lose it anyway if we're going if you're if you're going to build this if you're going to build the cadillac or you're going to build this competition swimming pool here you're going to lose that anyway because you have to have the meets come in but and do you want to do this for the citizens of leesburg or to varies or you matilda or eustace I, I think we have to keep in mind that the town well, deserves back, some of this. Well, back here, yes. Yes. but yeah, well, obviously, absolutely. But back here, you've got you've got football facilities, and you've got people coming from where do they come from, Miss Mr. Hayward? They come from all over mm -hmm. Central Florida to come into here. We want them to come in, to, you know, people to come here. We want people from Tavares and Eustis and Mount Dora to to come into Leesburg, and um, and so. I agree that, with that, just so that all the time in these facilities is not given away. Yeah. That's well, all. Well, well, that's part of what we'd have to figure out that partnership and how right. to allocate that. That's why I'd like to We've see We've got a college that we, you know, I think, you know, Lake Sumter, we want them, we, you know, we want to, I think, work with them and for them to be as active and involved and grow their campus in, in Leesburg as possible. And um, and you've got Beacon College growing. I think, I think there are some, you know, the hospitals. Um, as well, so I think there's some, you know, some partners there that you know that we do need to take into consideration to help make their um, their schools, their um, hospitals more attractive to the people, their students and doctors and nurses that they're they're trying to attract. That's where you get the value out of spending three million dollars or four million dollars to build a swimming pool because it's not going to be on the people paying a dollar a day to come swim in the swimming pool or two dollars a day to come swim in the swimming pool or or you know to have a meet here and there you're, you're not going to get that money you get it you get it from that adding that um, amenity to the those other partners okay, I mean. yeah, yeah. So. I mean I, I, I like the Jim and Susan Street concept since they're centrally located and uh, I don't see I even if we wanted to, to pay for the site work at uh, Venetia Gardens I don't I don't see a solution for the parking that's my biggest concern there so if we can't come up with the parking then I mean that for me that's that's how we would have to you'd have to you'd that. have to build that tunnel and put the parking over in um, <laughs> right. a shovel. Tunnel's more than a pool. Yeah, three million dollars. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And then now, yeah. Three million dollars. So, and that ADA tunnel, so probably eight million right. dollars. <laughs> um, uh, if it's for parking, so. Uh, yeah, so, I, and then in terms of the concepts, I, you know, I, I personally, for me, a pool, you know, it's number one, it's so we can teach kids to swim. And being in Lake County, it's very important. And if we're going to have that, then I think it needs to work for um, at least some sort of swim meets. So I, I personally uh, like up concepts two and, and possibly three. Uh, I'm not on the Cadillac uh, <laughs> Cadillac train. I, I think that's uh, a little a little a little much uh, and more than we need. But uh, that's Mayor. I, I, I mean, if I if I could say if I, if we're going to do th if, if these prices are somewhat in the ballpark. I mean, if we're going to do three, if we if we were to do three at two. And I, and I say this based on getting these partners and getting some property to help fund this. Um, but if we're going to do three, you've got the cost of that at what, 2.2? 2.2. And then you've got four with the dive pool in there, which I assume the, do, the, do the high schools and do they do dive competition? You've, yes. you've got diving on three yeah, as okay. well. Oh, you do have the dive yeah. on three? Yeah. Three is like the, the competition pool that from at least my limited understanding of talking to people. Is it, a, what's is the it difference three? in the, but what's the, it, why is this? It's but, got the, the 50 yard. Yeah, I, or something. I explain that to me because I'm not a swimmer. So this number Here's, five shows us. Three, three, the, the 50 meter pool is the, the Olympic size. The super trainers, when they run the Olympics and you see Michael Phelps, they, they, they swim 50 yard pools. It's a, it's a training, a competition thing because they, they want to go longer distances. They swim longer they had a, and they don't, they don't want to go back and forth. What? I don't think your 50 meter pool is is really necessary to be an attraction. Can you go to that next one? So, so uh, now, what's, what's but I would take the I would take that option money. What is and, this right here? That's that's a that's a twenty five yard. What that's what that's I'm a twenty. About yeah, then. that's a twenty five yard pool with a recreational facility in it. Now, is is that a deeper 
diving thing right. than the, this would be than, than this, number this, three. This square is diving yeah. well, okay? This is your lap pool. So this is like six to eight feet deep, a square bottom. This is your diving well, so down to 12 feet deep. And then this would be your zero entry into six feet in here. Right, so no but this is not in number three. No. Right. Actually, it is a ski Oh, that's so that right. Yeah. Yeah. So the difference between three and four is you also got the play structure on four. Yeah, the, the difference between three and four is this brings in more of a recreational component for another 400 grand. I, or, you know, here's, I, I think you, or you, you take this number, go back to the other component, number three, and and you marry these two. I, 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 you know, we put this in here because it's talked about. I, I don't think this is a good option. Because then you're, you're, you're putting money into 50 meters, and it, it, you're never going to use it. And, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll provide an example. Um, the, the North Indian River County Pool, which was located in Sebastian, Florida, they had a 50 meter pool and a recreational component. And they brought in a ton of people and everybody talks about the Sebastian pool and they loved it. But when they had swim meets and they brought in events, they never used the 50 meters. They always did. And, and, the, and these pools are sized that this is 50 meters and this is 25 yards. So you'll you never see these big high school or meets. And you, you don't start using that 50 meters until you know, you're in college and you're going down to Orlando or Fort Lauderdale and swim the Olympics. Or so, but I think you, but I think with that kind of coin versus the other coin, you can come up now with the concept or, uh, in that two and a half million dollars that gets you a little bit of recreation and gets you uh, your 25 by 25 pool. So, so, so on, on option four, is, is that? The yeah. size of a swim meet as well on the on the yeah. Bottom. So your swim meet, your swim meets here. Your eight eight by twenty five. Okay. Okay. So you're going to be teaching swimming lessons in for like intermediate folks over here. You're going to be teaching your toddlers over here on the beach side. Who kids who don't know how to swim and babies and infants. You know, kind of slowly incrementally moving them into the big pool. And so scheduling would look like in the morning, you're gonna have your swim lessons and the whole pool's gonna be used because you're gonna have three or four or five different classes going on at once. Okay. You're gonna have your infants up here. You're gonna have your intermediate guys down here. You probably have your, your diving pool closed. Okay. And then by noon, then your recreational swim. And then in your mornings on your Saturdays and Sundays, you're gonna have your events. And then in the winter, when recreational swim starts going away, you're going to bring in, okay, let Eustace, let Tavares, let them come in, let them swim laps. So that concept works. I think it's a reasonable exchange. If, if you go to the Dabney site out there, you build this pool, you put it at Dabney, and the only hook that you're into it is you got to etch out a time to get three high schools to use of it. That's a reasonable deal for that value of property. You can, you can, and then you still have a regional draw. So I think this concept at this price on the property is, is if you're going to go pool, that's what I would be recommending. Yeah, I, I think that's the one I that yeah, I like. like the yeah. biggest bank. I'm in the Hyundai now, so we, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> this, this isn't quite Hyundai. You know, this is kind of the Buick plan. Yeah. It's, it's not Cadillac. It's not Hyundai. But I but I I, I know I've, I've I've said this, but I you know I've been. I'm not the biggest supporter of, of spending the money on a, on a swimming pool, but I've said that if it has, if we get more bang for the buck out of it, then then I, I, it serves a bigger purpose than just having people to be able to go have a place to swim. And so for me, I really would like to look at putting it to, to expanding the Susan Street recreational complex area, looking and see what we can do to take out a blighted area at the at the same time as doing that and when you when you when you step back and you look at the big picture of that you know like the bicycles and those bicycle trails well that bicycle trail runs right behind there and would run right along and it comes and it crosses over 27 if you can get the Bennett Walling property involved in that as well and you bring and you and you go over 27 into downtown Leesburg now and and uh, 
and you take that trail into downtown and you do some shared roads over to Venetian Gardens and Palmora Park, you've, you've connected you know, a whole rec you know, Venetian Gardens over to this um, through bicycles and recreation and you've, you've really, I think you create um, a, a real nice attractive uh, recreational identity. And um, with the additional there. use back there, you've also taken care of one of the issues of the homeless. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, I like two and three really just because they're cheaper. But um, <laughs> if you can, uh, I, I guess, I, I really do like the idea of telling the school board to give us this dabbing property, which right. it's not worth anything to them. They've been trying to sell it for like, what, 10 years? They sent this one away for 200000 over here. Yeah, and so silly. if they could just so, give us yeah, that so. property, and I think it's we could do something good with that property. So negotiate them, negotiate them. Yeah. You know, there's, and I don't, you know, to, you know, Tom Frost, the second time his name came up tonight, but he's also thrown out that Lee School concept, and, and maybe that's even a location. Now, that's still not owned by Mr. Frost. Um, it's still owned by the Binge Group, but that, that's an, and that's why we didn't throw all these concepts in there, because we can talk about concepts and... Well, that'd be nice, too, but I, I, you know, I think, you know, the Susans, for me, that's, that Susan Street taken out a blighted area, or taken, you know, connecting that up, creating another entryway into the park through the Walling property there to figure to figure out those pieces. I think you've created a, a major recreational piece. You've got good pieces to it right now, um, and you've just, you know, I, 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 you know, well, I don't think it can't help but to uh, increase property values around there and uh, be attractive to. So, no, we, we've got a lot of people that have been having to listen to us for a while, so uh, <laughs> maybe uh, we let them uh, come up and have some comments and then, you know, going so if you like uh, if you could when you come up if you just state your name so we have it for the record okay. and then uh, just try to keep your comments to around three minutes yeah John Dabney uh, recreation pools are all well and good but you make your money commissioner uh, I would think in using our own property that you're talking about uh, city manager uh, at the recreation place and then you lease it out to different schools, different teams for practice when you ha and having different events. Uh, as far as, uh, to me personally, either that concept four or three, with the 50 yard pool, you do run into the thing of who swims 50 yards, and most of you find that in competition in colleges. Most of your high schools can work out a 25 yard pool, which is what we had at Venetian Gardens all of these years. Uh, I don't know whether Leesburg High School even still has a swim team, I'm not really sure. But there are teams and then you got traveling teams just like your other sports. Uh, whatever you do with that softball complex at Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow, if you build a decent aquatic center here, you can do the same thing. Uh, you have property at the record. As long as the land is there to put a pool on, that's where we should go, in my opinion. Uh, I worked with aquatics in this area for this city for over 25 years. I worked at that Dabney pool, grew up in that pool. And I'm glad to see it's still there now to take care of the citizens. We can have that recreation uh, element, but at the same time, if we're gonna have a pool that's gonna generate funds, which it can do, then you lease it out to different com uh, teams, and that's the way you do it. The Dabney property over there, as far as I'm concerned, you'll get tied in, and you'll have schools from all over the county wanting to come over here because you made a deal with the county. Let's keep this for us. You have the property, so use it, in my opinion. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. See you anymore? Um, I just want to first thank you all for having this discussion. Um, I know there's been a lot of people that are anxious to, to get this settled. Um, I just want a couple clarification things. Um, <clears throat> one, I think that um, we, we do not need a 50 meter pool. 50 meters really is actually just the Olympics. Even colleges compete 25 yards. So there's really not, I mean, we, there is competitions that are 50 meters over the summer. The season is 50 meters, so people go to 50 meter pools. But really, I just don't think that it's needed. I think that we can really accomplish what we want with, a, with having the 25 yard pools. Um, I think 
the other thing I would like to maybe see if you can get clarification on with the school board, because it's my understanding that they don't necessarily need to train at our pool all the time. The other cities, Tavares and Eustis, um, they have pools that they can train in. It might just be that they need to compete. Because the reason why we can't have swim meets at our pool right now is because you have to do a push start. At, well, at the pool that's gonna be um, torn down. So you have to push off the wall. So they would like to have a, a pool that you can compete in that you can actually dive off the blocks. So I would, I would assume that they probably don't want to drive all the way to Leesburg to practice because there are pools in both of those areas um, that they probably are just looking to use them for competitions. That's, I don't know that for sure, but I, I know that um, I did talk to one of the uh, to Mr. Matthias, and I th that was the understanding I got from that. Um, and then other than that, I just I just really, I love Concept 4 personally. <laughs> um, I love the idea of, I do like the idea of the recreational complex, but I also really like the idea of having it in Dabney, and, um, and, and so either one of those would be wonderful, but that's just my two cents. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Miller and all the commissioners. I'm happy and I appreciate you letting me have this opportunity to speak just a few seconds on this idea of the pool, Dabney pool in the Carver Heights area. Although the pool belongs to the city, it is most important that that Dabney pool will serve the community in which it is located. The pool has been an icon for over 50 some years, bearing the center of summer activities for most of the children in the Carver Heights area. We must remember that the pool is named in memory of Mr. H. O. Dabney and that he was a teacher, changed hundreds of lives in that pool by teaching children and adults to swim with water safety, self-respect, and decent living. This is part of what Leesburg's history is all about, which we want and would love and we need to preserve until the very last. Because of these reasons, it is worthy discussing how we might revive the importance of the, mo of the po pool, excuse me, rather than casting it or chasing it out or closing. Here are two suggestions. It is important for people who manage the pool the lifeguards and whatnot come from the community because this has changed a different message has been sent which says the pool is no longer the cornerstone of summer fun. This could be fixed by training the guards and other people that help with the pools who live in that area. One, the entrance fee, uh, I must, yeah. One the entrance fee could be reduced. You know that is a bit two dollars, I think it is, is a bit expensive for low income families, and especially a parent that had maybe two or three children who would like to go swimming every day. We also know that reducing that price would help. And the other change would be to do something or have someone or some people in that area be trained and have the opportunity to serve at that pool. The entrance fee could be reduced as I've mentioned and also those are two main things I think I'd like to call your attention to. It would make a huge difference. And I'm sure that you can think of some other things that might be turned, be happen, and could happen and return the pool to being a safe and exciting place 
for all of the citizens of Leesburg. Now you, please consider and reconsider what I've attempted to say here this evening. That is one particular location that is still an uphold on the uplifting thing, in a sense, to the neighborhood or that area. Please, let's help us see if we can build it up and make it more effective as times come. Thank you. Some more comments. Hi, my name is Don Parsons. I live in Palmore Park. I'm going to take a little different tack on this. That pool has been in Venetian Gardens forever. My kids, my daughter's kids, have all enjoyed that pool there. It is at a very central place. If you move it across Davin, over to the Davenny area, the kids over in this area are not going to go over there, and you know that. I'm totally against moving that pool over there. I want it to stay in Leesburg, either at Venetian Gardens or the uh, school property or somewhere in that area. I don't believe that it's a good move to move it to, over to the Davenny area. Yes, my name is Randy Epburn, born and raised here in Leesburg all my life. I can remember being a kid 50 years ago and couldn't get in Venetian Garden pool. I couldn't go because I was a black kid, wasn't allowed to get, now I heard this comment, I wasn't allowed to get in that swimming pool over at Venetian Garden, being a black kid. I can look at, sit and stand at the fence but I couldn't get in the water just because of the color of my skin. So I know what all this stuff is about. It's our community and our neighborhood. That's the reason we don't want the pool to go where it is. Just quit fooling yourself and be truthful. God want a man to tell the truth. Tell the truth and shame the devil. That's what a man's supposed to do. And I'm telling you, I know why they don't want it over there. Because I've experienced it. I've experienced it all my life. I couldn't get in the water over at Venetian Garden. H.O. Dabney taught me how to swim. We used to have to get on a school, on an orange grove bus. He used to go through the neighborhood and pick all the black kids up to take us right there to Carver Middle School. I mean, to, 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 to that school. I was born and raised him. A lot of these people just, just came in here. This is where I live. I have experienced it. I know firsthand what happened here. We got on a bus, he took us from uh, Pine Street the Carver High School every day to teach us how to swim. And and I could walk. i tell you where I lived. I lived on Pine Street. I was able to walk. My mama didn't want me going to the pool. If I got over there, the police would run me from over there. Hey boy, what you doing around here? We had to leave. We had to leave, so what we ought to do is be sensible about this thing. We got a police department. If you're so fearful of your children going in the Carvite area, I see police cars post up over here on um, behind the CDC commission. What's the name of that? Canal Street. Canal Street. Two or three police cars sitting there every day. There's no trouble over there. Put them where the trouble is. We pay taxes here. Put the police over there around the pool. That's the side of the problem if you're so fearful of your kids coming in our neighborhood. I just want to thank you. But I like to tell the truth and shame the devil. That's what God wants me to do. Amen. Amen. Hello, I'm Dr. Nick Prostowski. This is my fifth time in front of the city commission. I would like to go ahead now and formally, and for everybody out here, and for everybody that can get on social media and throw the challenge out there from the word go. USA Swimming throws wonderful courses every year. They oversee United States Swimming, they oversee the Olympics. They know everything about everything, as they claim, when you go through that one day course on what's happening with municipal swimming pools in this country at all times. They know what works, they know what doesn't work. In December of 2012, I put myself in New Orleans at my own expense, spent a day, walked in 
knowing a little bit about swimming pools walked out knowing an awful lot about swimming pools and had the ability to contact them out there in Colorado Springs where the uh, USA Swimming Headquarters is along with the Olympics. A couple of things that they go ahead and say. A couple of things I brought up five years ago. A couple of things that are sitting on social media under Leesburg Needs a New Swimming Pool on Facebook. Throw out the idea of a 50 meter pool. Throw out the idea of your Cadillac pool. Throw out the idea of using this pool for rehabilitation for older people. The Arthritis Foundation mandates it be at least 82 to 84 degrees in temperature. That's too hot, that's too expensive. Cover your pool at night, which the city has not been doing. We lose 40% of our heat, and therefore they wouldn't heat it because they said it cost too much, but they wouldn't put the cover on it. That's what started this whole thing years ago. When you jump into the pool, you will jump in, according to the Florida High School Athletic Association, into a minimum five foot depth, USA swimming, six and a half feet depth, out for approximately 13 to 16 feet, and then the pool depth is only four feet. If you have a six foot pool all the way around, you're gonna have kids drowning. Four foot depth after they do that initial jump in. Okay, 25 yards works beautifully. You do not want to put a cover, any type of building over it because of the other chemicals that'll build up in the air. They claim, five and a half years ago, kill the idea of a diving board. The reason is, is because when you go ahead and take a look at your insurance premiums, that's gonna hit you in the head real hard because that's where most of these injuries occur when kids jump off these areas incorrectly and get hurt, okay? So that's some, something to consider. The last time I was here was a few months back when the idea first came up to kill the swimming pool. Most of the swim team was in the back of the room. Afterwards, and as, as I walked out, I had approximately four members of the African American community come over and say, nice presentation, we want to ask you two, two favors. And I said, what's that? Please n ask to name this pool after a historically black educator, and they mentioned H.O. Dabney. The second thing was, as I've heard from 23 years of practice in this town, and working on people with all sorts of diseases, is make it so that people can walk to it. I mean, we have a beautiful Sleepy Hollow out there. How many kids are gonna go walking through out in that direction to get to Sleepy Hollow without getting hit by a car or getting lost? Get it so they can walk down there, okay? Another thing that they went ahead and mentioned, and remember, please, that they said, as, as you can imagine, we watch over every pool in the nation. If it is set up properly, properly with an aquatics director, you will make money from the very first day you open up that pool. Tavares, Mount Dora, most of them swim over at the YMCA. They don't want to come all the way over here. They're not going to come all the way over here. They may come over here to use a, um, a meet. My child used to be on the swim team here. I started asking around several years ago. On a weekend, when a school puts on, when, when a swim team puts on a, a program for competition, Friday night, Saturday, and somewhat Sunday morning, as Mr. Minna was saying, you may not know the numbers, Fifteen to $25,000. Now a swim team doesn't need that much money, so if the city says, look, we'll let you keep one quarter of that, we'll take three quarters, this pool is making some serious money, okay? Um, you have a lot of different things you can do with this pool. It can work out there at the YMCA, opens up at 5.30 in the morning for adults to go ahead and swim their laps, closes though, closes though before nine o'clock at night. It does not stay open late because there's no reason to be out there late. And it is lifeguarded, and it is heated, but it is, it is kept um, uncovered for most of that day. I'd like to throw out a location, because I sat on the corner of Pine and Child Street for years, and I had a chance to watch some blight. I would like to see this pool go on that unused land for Lord knows how many years on Pine Street. Three acres of land that's sitting there, owned by, I believe still, and you can correct me if I'm wrong there, Mr. Christian, the Community Development Corporation. Yes, sir. Okay. You have got three acres of land. You have more than enough parking. You have more than enough room. 70% of our African Americans in this nation cannot swim. They cannot swim. I'm not sure today what the percentage of African Americans in Leesburg is, but if you have 70% that cannot swim, they don't go near water. And it's important to go ahead and tra uh, train people so how to swim. you African Americans get in free? Pardon me? Are you recommending after getting this one in the pool for it? John, whatever it takes. Okay. Whatever it takes, because now. I'm just wondering if you try to propose, make a proposal. 
make a proposal for what? I was you, you were talking about African Americans can't swim 70% and you directed to the CDC owning property. Um, I'm just the chairman of the board, I'm not the board, so I think if the city wants to buy the CDC's property. Sure, or put it out there as a proposal. But there's a lot of vacant land throughout Lee. Uh, we had a chance to go ahead and hear Cadillacs, we had a chance to go ahead and hear 50 meter pools. That's Nobody, said, you know, Miss Moore was right, Andrew nobody's recommend. swimming 50 meter pools except the Olympics or the Olympic trials. Here's something from Mirtha Pools, and then I'm all finished. Mirtha Pools is the largest pool maker, manufacturer, and installer in the United States of America. They're based in Italy. Got this today. Called up the fellow last week. Attached is a drawing for a similar proposal in Jacksonville, Florida. Theirs is 75 feet long by 82 feet wide. So a little bit bigger than a Leesburg pool you're proposing, but you'll get the idea. Without getting into details of what type of finishes, they put in stainless steel pools with an epoxy PVC covering. They will put 25 year warranty on that pool. They'll fix it for free, 25 years. I'm confident that we can fit into the ballpark price of $1.1 million to $1.2 million for a 75 foot by 75 foot competition pool at six feet deep. This includes all of Mirtha's materials, plumbing, mechanical, labor, install. Basically, turnkey encompasses everything necessary to get the pool up and running. This does not account for your engineering, outside concrete for pool decks, buildings, timing equipment, bathrooms, etc. Strictly components for outdoor use. The numbers there are a bit off. Three million dollars for that for that twenty-five yard no, pool. No, we're not we're not off. That's option number two. Okay, okay. we've said one point seven. Okay. And you say 1.2. So I'm going to say that's pretty good estimating. It is a very or good if estimate. You're advocating. You got the bathhouse. a very good estimate. And I got the bathhouse too in there. It is, so we're a, right on. It's a very good estimate. So our numbers almost that's match. A, almost identical. Good. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Minner, this is not the first, second, or third time I've stood before you. Uh, I'm right in town here. If you would like to go ahead, it, I, I would ask you well, we're fly all, out to the very next we're USA all swim team, educate yourselves up I, so we don't spend six years, 10 years. Jim Miller, back in the early 2000s, was putting out proposals for pools. That's 18 years ago. Our numbers are about the same, that's the point. Very good. And you were trying to say the opposite, so I just wanted to make it clear. I'm that not saying the opposite, but as this gentleman said, you have to speak truth. And I'm going ahead and telling you that we have been out there, now that the pool is closing in the height of, in the height of summer, that before we talk about putting it where people can't get to, that the public has the right to weigh in on what our opinion is. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Any other comments from the public? Oop, one more? Hi, my name is Tammy Heineman. I'm a third generation Leesburg resident. Obviously used the Venetian Gardens and Dabney Pool all my life. We have morning workouts at Dabney, afternoon workouts at Venetian Gardens. I would like to, I don't care which pool you build as long as it works for competitions and for swim teams. But if you're considering competition, you need to include a warm up and a warm down area. Uh, you need to consider the lights on at night, on Friday nights. So if you're over at the basketball court area and you're talking about redeveloping that neighborhood, you might just want to make sure they know that with their redevelopment money, they're going to have to put up with some of that. You know, Maybe they'll love it, maybe they won't. I'm not sure, but that's something to consider. I personally think that it would be really cool to put it at H.O. Dabney Elementary site and name it after Mr. Coach Dabney. He coached me in high school. I loved him. He's great. He, you know, he meant a lot to all of us. So to name it after him at the Dabney Elementary site would be really special in my opinion. That would also tie in with the Venetian Gardens improvements. Um, I don't think with that amount of land that having lights on or some noise on weekends would bother anybody in the area since there's four acres, but you'd have to ask around, I suppose. But I just wanted to mention that uh, with the competition scenario, a lot of times the swim teams have to work out at 5, 6 a.m. because there's lessons that start at 7. Wouldn't it be great if you had the diving well or, or a little side area where some lessons could be going on along with the team being able to swim, you know, so they're, they're not, you know, having to get up in the dark and ride their bike to the pool. 
which I've done for 20 years before. So that's just my input. Thank you for your consideration. Hi, my name's Alyssa Sestarsik, and I was born and raised in Leesburg. I was, um, I had swimming lessons at Venetian Gardens. I was a lifeguard at Venetian Gardens and at Dabney Pool for six years. Um, I managed both part of the time I was going through college, so I have experience at both. I was on a swim team, so why I'm telling you this is I'm engaged and I think it's great that I'm now finally hearing that we are going to do something and um, go forward with getting a competition pool. I agree with what Tammy was just saying. Um, also from the swim lessons portion, since I gave swim lessons, the way that Venetian Gardens is set up makes it much easier to give swim lessons to different levels, having a diving area, uh, having a little bit shallower area. So again, um, I like four, but I think it needs, could be kind of morphed a little bit to fit a little bit better towards what we could use it for um, to, to kind of fulfill some of those different areas. Has at different times giving um, lessons to different ages and levels, um, different heights uh, are important. All three of my boys have taken swimming lessons at Venetian Gardens. Two of my boys just finished the lifeguarding class that is for the junior lifeguarding and I hope that they will become lifeguards once they turn 15 down the line. So I really do hope that this goes through. Um, since I have worked both pools and also experienced taking my kids, I will stress that Venetian Gardens is, is heavier used than Dabney Pool is used. Um, and so that's why I still feel that somewhere towards this direction, I love the H of Dabney idea. I love putting it on that site. I went to school there. That's tying the community together. Um, I watched kids of all races ride their bikes to Venetian Gardens and swim together while I did my swim lessons and while I um, worked there over the years. So um, I feel like that's still bringing that in and it's still connecting to our new vision of trying to open those areas. But I am very thankful that I am hearing here tonight that y'all want to, to put a complex somewhere. So thank you very much for that. Any more comments? I'd like to take one, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Ron McCarthy, and I grew up in Leesburg. I think I came here four years old. And we always went to bury, I mean, a Dabney Pool, basically. And I think it's good for the community, the little kids, too, because they got to learn how to swim. And I know they have competitions out there. They used to have water shows, which was really good for the whole community because everybody came together. But I think it would be a big waste of land and space to get rid of that. I think if it got any serious problems, it could be fixed for a lot less money. But I think it's really a good area. That nobody got drowned it, that I know of over all these years. And I was here and I was awake. But that is very, it's a very good pool. Mr. Dad, he probably don't remember me, but he taught me how to swim. <laughs> That's his son. So I say for the community and the little kids that are growing up, and I think they have classes out there for meets or whatever. That's good too. But I think the little kids are very important to be taught how to swim and have somebody to look over them. Like again, I say, no other swim on my time. And thank you. Any other comments from the public? Okay. Back to commission. Now, obviously, we're not deciding anything with like voting on tonight because this was just a discussion. Um, but it, 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 I think it, it does sound like we're moving forward in the direction of the <coughs> complex somewhere. Um, I, can I just add, yeah. Mayor? I think that you know, listening to the uh, particularly one comment about the, you know. Um, the, going back to the 1.2 and the 1.7, I mean, I, you know, maybe that number um, two may be an option too. So I don't, I don't want to, you know, 
say I'm totally for four, maybe we need to look at that a little closer there. And, you know, I I, th I think you do need some direct. We need some direction as far as how we tackle the pool question. I think there's a couple of things that we don't need to address tonight. Um, if we build a new pool, the, the I think there's three primary questions. How much do we want to spend? Where do we want to put it? And if we build a new pool, does the Dabney pool need to close? Um, I'll, let me and let me go in reverse order. My recommendation to the commission is, uh, depending on where you pick to put the pool, eventually the Dabney pool does need to close. If if we invest whatever zero to a couple of million or seven million dollars, you know whatever the number is, if we invest a penny in a new pool. At some time, the Dabney pool does need to close down because we're going to be. At years down the road. Yeah, it could. Well, at the, like like I said, if you put it at the gym or you put it at Griffin or something like that, then I think you close down Dabney immediately. Right. If you put it at Pine, you put it wherever, then eventually the Dabney pool does need to close because there's no sense to have two pools and Dabney is going to turn into an operational issue. Second, I think what we, to, to figure out if you have, uh, if we're going to move forward with the pool, you, you give us the parameters of what you're w willing to spend this evening. If that number, if you're going to go with just the operations of a 25 by 25 yard pool that does, that is multifunctional and um, you can have laps, you can have swim practice, you can do teaching, um, these type of pools. And if you do that, then, then you're looking at a budget parameter of around 1.7. But, but if you, Al, I think I, I, if I can address that real quick, because I think before I can I can say that, I need to know what kind of partnerships can we create and what are the restrictions going to be in, in that. So back to the school board, the county, and those other properties, and 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 so forth. I don't I don't think I can say this is the pool tonight because I need to know, and I don't want to say this is a number. Because if I say this is a number, then I'm telling the school board, well, I don't need your property because, you know, you know I, I'd rather hash that out a little bit more on that partnership side. Um, and, and, I, and then on the, and it goes to the location too, because I'm, I'm not a full pool proponent to, to have a swimming pool. I like the extra benefits that you get by having it. And I think that putting it somewhere where it's all by itself, whether it's on Pine Street or whether it's at the Dabney property by itself, I, I don't think that's, I, I think you get more of a, um, of a of a creation of a recreational identity to your city if you put it where the recreational facilities are, whether that's Venetian Gardens or at the Susan Street where the recreational complex is. I and I would go with those two. I think there's support on the commission for that. Yeah, for, I would go I, with I those think two. The I don't think you heard any support for the Dabney site here. Yeah. No. The Dabney for the the, the, the Dabney put it at school. The, you don't. There is not support for the. I'd Dabney rather it be school at here. the rec at There's a recreational location. There's support for them to give us that property. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm putting a use the pool. Well, and then they can use the pool. School, right? Yeah. For the schools. There is support for that concept. To give us the property so we can sell it and do something else with it, and then they can use the pool. But why do they care if we put it there versus somewhere else if they get to use it? Okay, because they ain't resulted from the schools that use the pool, so it doesn't matter where it's at. <laughs> I got you. Sure. Yeah, so I think, I think on the location, we're... I'm, I like the recreation um, complex, and, and I just want to say, Mayor, I know we got some more people ready to speak, but you know, I grew up in Leesburg. I lived 807 McCormick Street, so I walked to the H.O. Dabney Pool to learn how to swim. So many summers at both pools. I was a volunteer at 15 at the Venetian Gardens. Uh, at that time, the city had a youth program, so I was a volunteer at 15 helping kids learn crafts and where we call them not a boys and girls um, club. I'm just going to say watching Facebook, listening to some comments, I promise you I'm not going to vote on a pool that's going to keep our city divided. 43,000 people use the gymnasium this year alone. 8,000 use our swimming pools. So if someone say kids can't get to it, those numbers don't add up for me. So we can sit here and, and make all these illusions, but I want to be in charge of my District 2 seat that said I'm going to do whatever I can to bring our city together where we're not saying one neighborhood, this neighborhood, this is a city complex. And we should be building facilities that bring our cities together. If you don't, if you don't go to Carve Heights, you need to go to Carve Heights. If you didn't go to Venetian Heights, you need to go, you need to visit and get to know your neighbors because we're a city that's inclusive, not divided. So my vote's going to always be what's going to be economically best and taxpayers' interest, which is in a neighborhood 
that's recreational parking lots already there you got 10 acres of land that you can grow connect to susan street whether you put a susan street or the gym i think connect recreational activities so to say someone's not going to go to to the gym or to the swimming pool i say they don't want to go too bad we're building a complex for all Leesburg residents. So my vote is going to always do what's best for taxpayers, not what's best for who wants to do it because it's in my neighborhood. Amen. So, so that, 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 that's my, I mean, economically, you can't tell me going on a blank sheet of paper, land with no parking lot and infrastructure is going to be economically feasible than on a gymnasium or Sioux Street where parking facilities, infrastructure is already in place. So I, 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 to me, I mean, we, we can't come one way and say let's cut costs. Then the next day, don't worry about costs. Put it where I want to put it. I think when we make decisions, we've always commissioned. Have, we've always did what's economically best and sound for the city. And I don't think we should stop because 50 people show up to a meeting. The gymnasium project, I'm just going to say this. We played around with locations. That project got kicked down the road one and two, three years because we couldn't pick a location. So I want to say to all the pool components, Trust me, pick a location, tell your commission to get to work. All this back and forth, we'll be here next year, because we've already talked about this location a year ago. We already had this discussion right in this room. We told, we had people come, they talked about where they learned how to swim. We had all the history lessons. We had that last year, but we couldn't finalize the location. Here we go again. As your answer, we, we, Master, we're not voting tonight. You're gonna come back six months late. You're gonna get on Facebook. Someone said on Facebook, they said, why don't Leesburg take care of their kids? Find me another city in Lake County that has more recreational programs, more recreational parks than Leesburg. You won't find another city in Lake County that has a $3 million gymnasium, has about four or five community neighborhood parks, three major sports complex for baseball. And, but people get on Facebook and they say this crazy, crazy stuff because they don't know their city. Get to know your city and realize that what's happening in Leesburg is not happening anywhere else, especially for children. At least since I've been on this commission, Leesburg's always been children dominated. So this project should not be about race, should not be about color. It should be about what's in the best interest of Leesburg. And economically, we should look at what makes the best economical sense for this location. So, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have to say on that one. Since we're not voting tonight. <laughs> but you know what my vote is. I know it's so true. if y'all miss it, that's what my vote is. Well, and we have to speak. Well, it has to be, we have to, we have to direct staff to come back with a formal proposal with actual costs and a contract. I mean, is it going to be five years? Is oh. it going to be six months that you're going to vote? I mean, it's up to the mayor. We're doing. We're, we're working through <laughs> our budget. Well, that's something in our budget. That's and that. And I know you didn't want to have a number, and and I respect that. But I, I think you you need a number. You need to give clear directions to staff to say, yeah, we're going to build a swimming pool. You need to make an allocation from the cash that we have. You need to put it in a pot, and then that means it's going to get built. I mean, and you could. It just, let me back up. You need to have an allocation. You need to put the money aside. You need to instruct staff to start working on it. Yeah. Wow. Now, I, now from there, from there on, now from there on, from there on, that doesn't mean it's going to get built, but that means we're working towards it because that's where we're going to have to come back with design schemes. We've got to tighten up the number. We got to find a location. So, but but you got to give clear direction to the community. If we if we do it at Susan Street, I like number four minus whatever we don't need to have because it's not conducive to whatever the swimming it, regulations are. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm with you there. And the diving, so, I think, is important to look into the insurance. But, that right, but I like the idea if it's at the recreation complex that you have this multifaceted, you know, then, waiting area or whatever for the kids and the and that, slide. And, that and, it, and if that's a motion and if there's a the, second. If it's at it, so if the motion is to, and I would recommend, I think number number four was 2.6 million or something. Yeah. I would say allocate up to the 2.68 million dollars to investigate construction of a swimming pool at the Susan Street area. Can I say area? Because that's a little broader. Wow. And then if that motion passes, what we'll do is we'll start our work to start researching and bring back design schematics. And then we'll go step by step, just like we've done on every other project. Can, can I add to that as well? And I, and I, I know these are side pieces, but I, I do like the whole idea of the whole picture there that we look at the birchwood involved with that and the walling on those two sides of it. as at least in discussion and, and contemplating what we can accomplish there in this. So. And I think I'd like to see a, a 
potential site for a teen center as well Mixed as part with, of the yeah. match master plan. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just want to clarify: when I say we're not voting, I mean we're not like voting to go start digging digging dirt to build a pool tomorrow because we we literally can't do that um, without putting out for procurement and, and going further. We're talking about moving in a direction. So, but uh, so. are you going to build a pool? But. <laughs> Can't, don't know yeah, yet. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, so. once, once you get yeah. the place and all of the engineering and all of that, are you going to vote to build? Uh, okay, okay. I'm so, you're gonna have to come up to okay. the microphone and She's say your done. name. Um, okay. And we have a few more people that want to add some public comment. So okay, if we, we go ahead and fine. let's have yeah. some public comment. So. Okay. Hi, I'm Linda Tucker. I've been here since I was seven. I've taken lessons at Venetian Gardens. My children have. My daughter's been a lifeguard. My son did the junior lifeguarding thing. Since I've lived here, you've had two pools in this town, and you have grown to the outskirts and beyond. To totally shut down two pools and come to one, really, I like the idea, yes, of it tying in the gym in Susan Street, but to totally shut down and go to one pool for the size of this area, really? I mean, come on. How are kids that live on Sleepy Hollow, you gonna put your kid on a bus by themselves to go all the way to Carver to get swim lessons? I mean, come on, you have a pool. The high school hasn't been able to have swim meets throughout my daughter's, I think, entire high school year. She's in college and grad school now. Swim lessons are important. The Dabney thing to have an aquatic center on that side that you can have swim meets, yes. Option number one, to redo and bring Dabney back up to what it should be, yes, you need that at the Dabney pool. But you need two pools, if not more, in the size of this town. And yes, when are you going to build? Because look, we're bulldozing in the middle of summer, swim lessons and everything else, and you're just going down to the Dabney size pool. Is that really fair to everybody? That y'all didn't address this before deciding to bulldoze Venetian Gardens. That's why everybody's here. Well, I'll just say, no. I was, all along, I was like, we can't do community center without deciding what we're going to do with the swimming pool first. I mean, we and, live uh, around lakes. So. Not everybody can afford private swim lessons that cost, one private swim lesson is what it costs to have a child go to city lessons for two weeks. Okay, you but I, but Mayor, building I a pool. Add, I, I want to I want to piggyback on what Commissioner Christian said, and, and I I this, the talk about I'm not you know anything that fringes on I'm not going to go there. Um, I, it's making me very uncomfortable. Um, I think Leesburg's a, um, a better city than that. Um, I understand history and you know where swimming pools were and where they are today, and there, there's that there's changes that happen. It's no farther for me to go from my house to Venetian Gardens as it's going to be to go from um, Palmora Park or one of the neighborhoods close by to Venetian Gardens to go to the swimming pool. And I go to Venetian Gardens. And other people in town that live on my side of town go to Venetian Gardens. And people that live on that on Venetian Gardens, Venetian Gardens side of town can go to where a swimming pool is if it's at Susan Street. Leesburg's bigger than that. I know people personally, and I think that people are just a little bit afraid, hurt that you're losing history and you're saying things that I don't think you really mean and I please ask you to stop. And and uh, and we focus on that this is one city, this is a small city, Susan Street is in the heart of town and it is easy to get there from anywhere and there are bicycle paths and there are roadways that already go to it. I'm asking the commission and the, the city manager to look at if there's feasible to even create another entryway in there to make it better. Um, better accessible, and that we stop this this silly, foolish talk about I'm not going to go there. I'll go wherever it is, but still going down from two pools to one. Okay. And the city limits are bigger than Beverly Shores to Venetian Gardens to Palmore Park. Uh, if the answer is, are we going to have more than one pool? The answer is is, is no. Okay. No, we're going to have one pool. Um, I don't think there's zero. So then you will also take out the old Dabney pool too, since you're already bulldozing Venetian Gardens. Well, I think when the new one's open, yeah, I think it's going to be gone. And, yeah. and, and, and Mr. Tucker, the reason I say the manager looked at the age of Dabney pool and 
recommended that we not add money to it because it is aging and in 10 years we'll be saying same thing at Venetian Garden so that was the recommendation of right y'all have been put well not y'all y'all predecessors have been putting a band-aid on both pools yep. for 20 years Right. For um, it, just for sake of argument, you know, I think as we moved into this whole spectrum, uh, at least from my perspective, providing you insight and advice on how you manage your community and your money and these type of things, I do want to just say a couple of things, and I'll, I'll be brief. I do think we move forward with a plan on how we, we move forward. Swimming lessons are not stopped. Swimming in Leesburg is not stopped. The same amount of people who swim at two antiquated pools can swim right now this summer on July 17th, okay? Everybody's gotta go to the Dabney pool. So when we made the decision to shut Venetian Gardens, we collectively made that decision because we felt like and voted and publicly discussed that the best plan for Dozier Circle was the modified plan that we've come up with. Now there was some dissension on that, but that's good. That's what collective government's all about. But we didn't stop swimming. We didn't close swimming pools. We said we're closing one pool. And for the interim, everybody else, everybody will have to collectively lose Dabney. So I think that decision was made in the sunshine. It was made with good discussion. Number two, we knew that there was going to be a pool that's coming. And so a pool, uh, a, a community of Leesburg stature should not operate with two antiquated pools. Okay. We, don't, we don't have a good pool. We have two antiquated pools. And if this body decides that we need a swim facility or aquatic facility that's worthy of this area, which I think we benevolently recognize will affect positively the region, then we don't need two swimming pools because we'll have a facility we've been operating since 1920 with two antiquated pools. So if we build one pool, we don't need two pools. And I think we are duty bound a little bit to recognize the social issues involved with this and the sensitivity. And when it comes to naming of the pool, yeah, I think we do need to remember Mr. Dabney. But I think this discussion was healthy. I think we've made good sound decisions. We've collectively moved forward each way. And at the end of the day, I think the commission will come up with the decision. And where it looks like we're on the precipice, Commissioner Bone, if that's a motion, you know, we have a motion to continue to investigate up to $2.68 million. And what we'll do at, Susan Street, at Susan Street Facility. And now, does that mean we're going to ultimately build a pool? My response was, it sure does feel like it, but it's not done. We've been operating at Dozer Circle for going on three years now, investigating, and we didn't affirmatively say we're going to build a community center till a month ago. So you can operate in that vacuum, and that's reasonable. So if we get direction tonight, chances are we're probably going to build a swimming pool. Now, there's caveats, and chances are we're probably going to build a swimming pool, but there's about 100 steps from tonight to a spade going in the ground. And so if, if Bob's motion is seconded and passed, that'll give us direction to start putting together an RFP to get a design. It'll have us start putting together how we put this, to, this site together. So we've got a lot of work. But an affirmative vote on that vote tonight certainly indicates that we're moving in a direction of building a pool. Good, thank you. That's the motion. So everybody understands. I will second that motion. Yeah. And does it also have the teen center in, in the footprint? Yes, I think this, this would include an overall. Right now. I mean, the, 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 the main focus is the swimming pool, yeah. but but this is a, con for me, this is a, a, a con I'm looking at a concept of this whole and, parcel, and, which would include the teen center, the Birchwood, the Bennett Walling property, and, and what we can do there. But with the focus on the swimming pool at two point six million dollars, yeah. okay? But to see what we can do to really, um, create an identity there with and, what we've got and, and just for clarity pools. purpose if you if you pass that motion what um what i'll be the action that we'll take on the staff wise is we will cut 2.68 million dollars out of that cash number and we will put it into a swimming pool or an aquatic facility fund that you can only spend on aquatics and 
towards the other components of that motion as we get into this budget process we'll go back I think we have some residual we have some unbudgeted Carver Heights CRA money and I would now I would take some of that to start working on this overall concept in that area so we can do both at the same time we can start thinking about how we build the swimming pool and we can go use some of the Carver Heights CRA money to figure out how we start putting together this larger broader concept of but, that but area but Part of that, if we are going to cut that out, I, I, I mean, I actively want us to pursue this, the county and the school board thing. If they're if they're willing to donate property to build a sw to put a swimming pool on, that there should be some understanding and, and you know that they can still do the same thing. And we put the pool where we think we're going to get more impact. That's. Um, I agree, mm -hmm. but as the maker of the motion, and your statement was, I don't want to put you on the spot either, Commissioner, but because y y your, your motion was at the, at the Susan Street. I can still go and, you know, contact the county and, and the school board for the Dabney locations, but I, you know, I'm, And then maybe we do comments, that as a commission, too. Your I mean, comments that, that we can about the Dabney seem a little mixed to me. No, 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 no. I think we're, we're, we're I, maybe. Maybe we're doing a bad job of, of uh, explaining. I think what we wanted a season street, but if the school board wants to let other schools come and use it for meets like they've indicated, we want them to give us the Dabney property so and do whatever sell. we want Is to. Is that what with. you're yes. saying? Yes, yeah, okay. so that we get we okay, get Okay, then, then, then I got that. I, yeah, that's I got their it. contribution to partner then, is to then, donate that, the county to do the same. Yeah. And, okay. and, and maybe not say sell it, but use for the best interest of Leesburg. Yeah, okay. yeah whatever we want to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I would suggest, because I, I, I thought it was very helpful, and we did this before I even got on the commission, is that we had, um, who, who was, I think it was Belvo did it, he did the charrettes, and it wasn't expensive, mm. and we had three meetings at Venetian Gardens, and we could do them at the Resource Center, and we should have the community come in, and we should talk about the master plan, and what we want to do, and we did the same thing at Venetian right, Gardens. Right. We had a master plan, and we committed to building uh, the park before we knew what we were going to do with everything right. else. Right. Well, we had some ideas, but... And I guess that's kind of what this yeah. would be heading towards. It's like, you know, so we, we've right. done v Venetian Gardens. Now let's go focus on, over on, on yeah. Susan Street and... And, uh, and, 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 and I, I there, understand so. the other concepts there with okay. the county and the school. Call for a vote. Okay. Uh, roll call. <laughs> Commissioner Dennison? Yes. Commissioner Bone? Yes. Commissioner Christian? Yes. Mayor Roba? Yes. And we're about to enter into public comments, so you're not forgotten. You're going to get a chance to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have, uh, uh, we have, we just have to go through real quick. Do you have any uh, city attorney items? Just what I hope will be the final update on the stay and save in. That deal did close. There's a buyer in possession of the property. Uh, uh, Deputy City Manager Rankin would know better than I what they're planning to do with it and when. But the city did get a payoff of some $47,000 on its lien which has been sent to Mr. Williams for deposit into the coffers. And the foreclosure sale next month has been canceled. Okay. Thank you. City Attorney Adams? Manager City Adams? Manager Adams? Yeah. No, I have no matter. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, so public comments. Uh, this section is for members of the public to bring up matters of concern or opportunities for praise. Issues brought up will not be discussed in detail in the meeting. They'll be referred to the proper staff or be scheduled for consideration at a future City Commission meeting. And we'd like you to limit them to three minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, for the opportunity to speak. My name is Betty Stevens Coney, and I'd like to speak to the topic of the pool. I'd like to summarize uh, Carter G. Woodson's quote, and when he said that when, he said when a, a race, a culture, I'm putting in there, when a community or a town does not remember their great contributors, then pretty soon those entities will dissolve and no one will ever remember who or what they were. I'd like for the record then to show that wherever the pool will be placed, when that pool Dabney Elementary, uh, Dabney Element, I'm sorry, H.O. Dabney Pool no longer exists, that wherever the pool is placed, it will wear the name H.O. Dabney Pool. Thank you. 
I think there's support for that. Just like for the record to show that we can leave tonight with the assurance mm -hmm. that wherever that pool is, it will wear the name H.O. Dabney Pool. As so many have spoken and as we have lived through um, the legacy of one H.O. Dabney, certainly it bears to name that pool. Thank you so very much for carrying through with that. Thank you. I got one comment, uh, Grand Ever. When, when the pool closed, uh, Commissioner, I got one request. We got a certain group of people that think that the Carver area is a dangerous area. I've been looking at the Facebook. I've been looking at this and that, and people saying how dangerous it is. It may be. It's dangerous everywhere in this world today. I don't care where you go. But one request I would like, instead of those police officers post up down there, post them up out there so we can keep some of the trouble down. If whoever may think it's trouble out there, let the police department do more routine patrol, and that way I believe everybody should be satisfied and it should give you some sense of comfort. Because I know it's a comfort, it's comfort what's causing these problems being in that area. So just, just have your police do a little bit more routine patrol. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Public comments? Uh, roll call. Commissioner Dennison. Um, yeah, changing from the pool back to the lake, we have a seaplane ramp. Are we going to have an opening for that? Yes, we've been arguing with the contractor a little bit on how they... You've got um, some major seams in that. I got I got two issues with, with the seaplane ramp, not the ramp per se. They, we, they, um, they did have some issues when they laid the asphalt. They've got some porous areas in there. Um, there's a couple of different ways they can approach it. I, did they, is Tracy here? Did they, they were scheduled to get that sealed Thursday. Mike, do you know if they got that sealed? I was there Friday. It sure didn't look it. They, do you know if they got the, the, the taxiway for the seaplane ramp sealed? I believe if it's not done, it's soon to be this done. This week, yes. Yeah. So one, once, that, once, the, once, the, once the taxiway is sealed, then we'll go ahead and we'll open up the seaplane ramp. Okay. Um, we don't have to wait for the docks or anything. No, well, okay. that, we're going to still probably end up arguing a little bit with the contractor yeah. on the hat. Uh, but the seaplane sea ramp is usable once the, the taxiway is sealed. Okay. And we are in the process of scheduling a ribbon cutting for that. Uh, we want Whip Air to be included in that. They're not free until August. Okay. So mm -hmm. we're so the ramp, the ramp opening there. imminently and ribbon cutting and formal ceremony once WIP gets back and sometime in August. Okay. Uh, talking about the history of Leesburg, what's with the Moat Morris house? Uh, we are waiting on a number from Evergreen for the final construction estimate. Mm -hmm. We hope to have that in the next couple of weeks. I okay. think I sent the commission out in the last week and a quick update on that. Okay. Um, so a couple of weeks we should have the number. Hopefully that matches what the insurance number is and then you'll have the financial information you need to make the final decision on what more is Okay. And the final thing, um, the, the streetscape on Dixie, are we supposed to have trees or something down the median? The trees are our responsibility. We have our landscape plans which look very similar to the plans uh, that we did out on east side of 441 they're at dot now waiting approval okay uh, once we do approval we'll bid it we hope to get the landscape and medians the trees and all the pretty stuff started august september october we couldn't start until the fdot project was finished out so i know we, when we've received a number of complaints about the tall grass that's actually still the contractor from dot but dot wouldn't let us integrate those two projects where we rotate from their street improvement project to our streetscape project dot wanted to finish it close it out do their specs and then we move in is there so irrigation there so that the trees don't die right away no that would that's part of our project Project. Okay. So that's okay. included in our estimate. So we'll be putting that in. That's all I had. Thank you. Commissioner Bone? Um, yeah, so uh, th the mall groundbreaking or grand, uh, whatever they're doing, is this this Thursday? This Thursday? At is it 5 30, Mike? 5 30 this Thursday. 5 30 this Thursday. I think right out, right in front of Belk there. 
Okay, right. All right. So uh, I'll be there for that. Um, then I, I appreciate the update on the memoirs. That was one of my questions, too. But also the kitchen and the resource center, they're, we're, they're under contract. We're still moving for construction okay. on that. All right. Um, and um, I've noticed there's, an, I, there's the old eyeglass store that's right there, kind of across from where Taco Bell is now, the, uh, going out towards the mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's getting pretty bad there, I've noticed. And so um, I don't know if there's any code enforcement action on that or that particular property or not. Or Al, you'll recall we started code enforcement on that building some time ago. Okay, I'll get you an update on that. Okay. Um, that's it. Glad uh, we made some progress on the swimming pool and I hope that all works out. Uh, I, th I think that that could really be tremendous at Susan Street there to do that, put all that together. So thank you. Commissioner Christian. Um, I got a, I'm sure y'all got a bunch of emails on Leesburg Runway 321. Um, yeah, if you can just update us on. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you this. In, in it, if, uh, uh, all, those, all those pilots who are listening in, airport, uh, uh, runway 321 is not being closed. The master plan to do the ALP was reviewed. An option in that ALP was to close that runway. I think that 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 alternative got a little bit of a scratch and sniff from the city commission. I think you guys like that proposal. That doesn't mean it was going to be done. The direction we sent our consultant was to put a little more detail on a compromise plan. They're working on that. And then we'll go back and we'll finish up the, the master plan with input from everybody. Whether it gets closed or not is to be determined. I would offer that even if you did close the runway, you're probably years and years away from closing it because it's just functionally how that option would work is you're not going to go out and close it tomorrow. Uh, you're going to wait. You're going to see. You're going to market property with the potential of it being closed. You know, if that goes on for 10 years and you never get anything, then you're going to change the ALP. That plan didn't work. But it's a, it's a, it's a step to put it in the ALP to consider it. I, I think that's the biggest, okay. the biggest issue. So, but at the end of the day, final scenario, the ALP is not even done yet, and the, I'm sure you will hear from the airport board. I'm sure you will hear from all sorts of input. I got, I don't know, Tracy sent me two emails filled with tons of input. I can reassure the commission affirmatively that the airport enthusiasts and pilots in the community do not want to see airport. The air runway 321 shut down. All right. So you, I'm, I'm sure you will consider that input when you make a final decision on the airport ALP. All right. Um, echoing Commissioner Bone, I, I'm happy that we are moving forward um, with the new swimming pool. Hopefully our community will understand how government works, and they've experienced it firsthand. Uh, government works to move slow, uh, methodical, and it's political. So um, we did com convince Commissioner Bone, he made the motion. So he got what he wanted. So, um, so, so I am happy that we are able to debate items and come up with a, a good conclusion that makes Leesburg better. Um, also, um, I reached out to Al, the um, Barry Park bathrooms were vandalized, and I just want to say our city manager, um, Got right on it, um, um, dispatched his um, departments, and I'm sure that we're going to um, rectify those situations um, in the community. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Can I have one minute of yes, your sir. time? Because I thought you were going to bring it up on that parking at the um, at the gym, oh, maybe. Yeah. So um, since it did come up tonight, and the really the lack of parking that there is, is you know, even you know, maybe an accelerated look at how maybe we can add some parking relatively quickly in the, at the gymnasium there. If it's just grass parking. Yeah. That's it. Mayor Robeck. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. So I think we were continuing to make progress. It is always slow, um, slower than, than any of us would like. And, and, and if any of us got to run the city by ourselves, it'd go a lot faster. It probably wouldn't turn out near as well. Um, so uh, you know, I think that is good. And, and I do want to echo um, what, what Commissioner Bone brought up in the discussion because I've also seen a lot of things on Facebook that I do think are not representative of our city. And um, I think one of the biggest learning experiences in a positive way for me being on the commission is being exposed to areas of Leesburg that I never had been growing up here. And I was at 
Carver Heights last Saturday for Juneteenth. Uh, I've been to many uh, functions on Pine Street, and I can tell you I feel safe all the time. So if 40 years ago you were an area and didn't feel safe, that doesn't mean it's not safe today. So, you know, if, if, if the people that, that don't feel safe in those areas are, 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 are watching this, you know, go out, see the city, you know, go places you haven't been, and, uh, and, and stop with the, the comments about with divisiveness because it's not uh, productive for, for anyone. So. Yeah. Can I add to that one second? I was talking about at the thrift store. We have a box truck that I did buy from Road Mike Lumber years ago. So it sits on our thrift, thrift store property. So I noticed we got some mattresses that was styled up the side. So I told Amanda, why you got those mattresses out there? Well, come to find out, Larry, which is her classmate, and she's younger than me, he was, he was homeless. He had created him a, a little house under our thrift store truck. So I came, I had a little attitude with Larry. So he says, What's why the hostility? Well I say, Larry, you can't be on our property. He had put a no trespassing sign up. I thought my manager <laughs> did it. I said, Larry, you can't put your stuff on my property. He said, I don't want nobody to steal it. But Larry, it's on my property. So he said, Aren't you the preacher? He said, Why the hostility? He says, I want to talk about the Lord. So my deacons day, he was a little more full. Hey, you talk to me. So I felt bad because Larry had got a rake. He had raked around the tree like it was his front yard. And um I came back here, put everything. I said, Larry, get your stuff that you want and put it in the pile and call the city to come and grab the rest of the stuff, put it in the dumpster. So I felt so bad. I came back. He had everything so neat, ready for the dumpster. I saw him down the road. I stopped and gave him 20 bucks. I said, Larry, you know what? I appreciate what you've done. So, so I just want to say we have people who, who are in homeless situations. I mean, this guy grew up in Leesburg, went to Leesburg High School. He even knew, hey, you grew up on Vine Street, right down the road from me. But he just got in, in, a, in a dire strait. And so we have some issues within our city. And he didn't call it a problem. I felt safe. I confronted him, and he was just as nice as he could be, but he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I just think we have to engage, as Mayor said, go to different parts of our city, get to know people in our city who may not look like us, who we didn't grow up with. Me and Tucker went to school together. But get to know people who you know who you normally don't get a chance to talk to. So I just want to encourage those who are watching, you know, get out, get to know people, and you'll find out that we don't have as many differences as we think we do. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. That meeting adjourned.